Okay, so obviously the uh, the meeting is being recorded. Um, so thank you for coming to the March 2022 um, Community Board 3 SLA and DCA Licensing Committee meeting. Um, my name is Michelle Cooper Smith. I'm the chair of the committee and um, Jeanette, Kim and Susan are helping with uh, with all of the fun Zoom stuff. Um, just a few guidelines for tonight's meeting before we get started. Um, uh, please sign into the chat with your name and affiliation if relevant. Um, for example, John Doe, CB3 resident. The chat is used to sign in, sign up to speak or ask about technical issues. And the chat only goes to myself and my co-hosts, Jeanette and Susan. Uh, I will announce when each agenda item comes up for, um, of, for comment from the public, please use the raise hand Zoom function to speak on that agenda item. If you are having trouble, um, try us in the chat. Uh, I will then recognize speakers with a maximum two minute time limit. But uh, we reserve the right to shorten that if there's a plethora of folks. If you're here representing a group, please select no more than two speakers to represent that position, but please also note how many attendees are here supporting you and we will count that. Uh, please keep yourself muted unless the chair, unless I've recognized you to speak to avoid background noise, we will mute you if um, we need to. Um, okay, so a couple of things dropped off the agenda tonight and we're going to go a little bit out of uh, order, um, just because I like to go through the ones that might be a little bit quicker first so that folks don't need to wait around. Um, the first item is uh, approval of last month's minutes. Are there any objections? Okay, hearing no objections, uh, we're going to move into the uh, first vote. Michelle Cooper Smith present. Jeanette Kim present. Jesse Beck here. David Crean here. Uh, Jamie is traveling, he is absent. Herman Hewitt. Okay. Ellen Liu, all zeros. Okay. I know Paul is supposed to join, so hopefully he will get on. Okay. Um, as I noted, we're going to go a little bit out of order. Um, but actually, first, are the um, applicants for Il Posto a Canto here? Yes. Okay, we didn't receive a petition from you. Do you have a petition to share with us? Um, yes, a petition was sent with the uh, letters of support. Uh, Teddy Gonzalez uh, sent that and said it was received. Uh, he got confirmation on it. Hold on. We had to send it in about four emails because we had so many uh, that is of support and also uh, signatures on the petition. Um, okay. I finally, I finally unmuted myself here. This is Teddy Gonzalez. I, uh, I got an email from Edwin Chang this morning. They, they, he posted it on the uh, website. Uh, Susan, I'm not seeing it. He told me he posted one this morning. Ordinarily, we don't start posting on Monday mornings, but he told me he did post it. Okay, I'm not seeing it. Um, you want me to send it to you? Yeah, why don't you send it to Michelle? Yeah, um, Teddy, I'll send you my email address. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and just for the future, we need them by Friday noon, the day before, the, the Friday before the meeting so that this sort of thing doesn't happen because we are, the office is a small but mighty team and um, we can't do last minute stuff like this, especially when we're doing it remotely. Um, My apologies. Okay. Yep, understood, thank you. Um, okay, um, is the applicant for number 799 Avenue B here? Number 799 Avenue B. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sure. So, I'm sorry. It's is, is it? It's uh, we're 99 Avenue B Sayer. Yep. Okay, you're the principal, the applicant. 
Yeah, yeah. And my counsel, Frank Palillo, should be on the meeting. Are you in here, Frank? I guess he's not here. Okay, do you want us to come back to you then? Uh, please. Okay. Um, 51 Avenue B, are you guys here? Present. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm here as well as the principals. Okay, fabulous. All right, so let's do that one. Thank you. All right, so I'm just going to drop the um, questionnaire in the chat so everyone can see it. And committee, I sent you the um, draft resolutions uh, earlier today, so you can take a look at the, that. That's what I'm going to be reading off of. Um, okay. And just so everyone knows for the run of show, basically what I'll do is I'll run through all the high points of the application and um, then I'll ask if there are any corrections from the applicant. We'll let the, uh, the committee ask questions um, and then uh, we'll turn it over to the public if anyone's present. Okay, so this is an application for 51 Avenue B between East 3rd Street and East 4th Street for um, El Pulpo. Um, do you have a certificate of occupancy or an LNO? We don't currently, but obviously we will have to have that. Okay, so a pending certificate of occupancy? Yes. Okay. Or, or a non-injection letter, but we'll, we'll get one or the other. Okay. Okay, and so this is 13 tables with 50 seats and one 15 foot bar serving um, Mexican food during all hours of operation. Um, which is closing by 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 1 a.m. Thursday to Saturday, opening at 11 a.m. all days. This location was previously um, uh, Max Restaurant, which um, had no history of any complaints known to the community board. Um, there were no commercial 301 complaints at this location since 2018. Uh, the East 4th Street Lower Avenue B Block Association wrote um, in support of the applicants so long as they agreed to certain stipulations, many of which are ones that we already um, prescribed, um, including op uh, operating a restaurant, closing all outdoor dining by 10 p.m. all days, closing by 12, 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 1 a.m. Thursday to Sunday, Saturday, excuse me, and installing extra soundproofing if necessary. Um, they received 56 signatures from residents who live within two blocks of the location. And um, uh, just two points of clarification uh, for you guys. One is that, have, has, have you operated restaurants before? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so if I, if I may, um, yeah. the, the applicant's principles are experienced. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't involved when the application was put in, but if, if, you, if you might, uh, I'd, like one, I'd like them to speak and tell, them, tell, tell you about their experience because it is uh, impressive. Okay, and is it Mina and Mito are both the principals? Yes. Okay, and then the other question I would have for you is are you committed to opening at 11 a.m. every day? Because if we put, you must, if we put that you're opening at 11 a.m. all days, that means that you must open at 11 a.m. all days. So we just wanna make sure because that's something that comes up. Um, if folks like are planning to do lunch in the future but aren't planning to do now, we don't want anything to you know, be misrepresented in the application. Okay, I, I believe I believe they desire that, but uh, when one of them speaks to talk about their experience, they could just confirm that. But yeah. Okay, yeah, and if you could just be brief, like one or two minutes, that's really all we need. Okay. Thank you. Who wants to talk? Mina. Hey, Mina, are you here? All right. So uh, my name is Mina. Uh, I've been uh, involved in in, in this industry industry for several years. I've worked at the restaurants. I start from the ground up, from being a busboy, waiter, bartender, all the way up to management. Uh, I managed two places in the city. One of them was Roxy and the other one was uh, Binash. And uh, after that, um, there was a restaurant called Tirada. It was a Greek restaurant. Uh, they have two locations, one in, uh, one in the city and the other one was in, uh, in the Hamptons. So I used to do the runaround. I was um, in the winter time in the city location and in summertime I used to go out to the Hamptons uh, to manage the other, uh, the other place. And your, bro your brother's an experienced chef. Is he on or no? Mido, are you here? Hello, can, can you hear me? Yeah, there you go, Mido, go ahead. There's, there's a little bit of lag. Um, hi, my name is Mido. I have a bachelor degree in hotel management I have helped uh, consult and build um, 
over 50 restaurants in the past 20 years. Currently, I own a restaurant who won the best new restaurant in the state of New Jersey. And uh, um, my partner there is taking care of it. It's on a very good track. Um, and I've done lots and lots of consulting for restaurants. And I worked in restaurants since I got to New York, where me and Mina met, actually. Great. OK. And just to confirm, you're planning to open by 11 AM all days? Yes. OK. Uh, okay, any other questions from the committee? Okay, um, anyone here from the public that wants to speak on this item? It's number five, 51 Avenue B. Raise your Zoom hand, please, or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, I'm not seeing, any. oh, Clint, go ahead. Sorry, now I'm still mute. I was struggling to get to my raise hand function too. <laughs> You're good. Go um, so no, I just want to say we did meet with the applicants and, you know, we had the same questions about the app, the experience. They explained that to us. Um, they have reasonable hours. And one of the big concerns from all the residents was the backyard. They said at this point, they do not intend on using the backyard. So that kind of assuaged all of our fears in regards to that. So otherwise it's a small place. They do seem to want to operate a legitimate restaurant. So we were happy with that. So just that's our two cents from the block association. Thank you, Clint. Um, okay, any questions from the committee? I don't see any other hands. Okay. I'm going to share the stipulations on my screen so we can all go through them together and make sure that we're on the same page. <laughs> nope, not my desktop. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is uh, Mina Ibrahim Amido Ahmad. Uh, do you have an LLC set up or not yet? No, okay, so I'm just gonna use your names. For 51 Avenue B, this is a full on-premises liquor license, a Mexican restaurant with a kitchen open and serving food during all hours of operation, uh, opening no later than 11 a.m. all days and closing by 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 1 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Um, you'll close all uh, outdoor dining, including open restaurants by uh, 10 p.m. all days. Um, as noted, you'll install any soundproofing as necessary to augment the existing soundproofing. They'll close any front or rear facade doors at 10 p.m. No DJs, no live music, no promote, promote events, no event with a cover fee, no scheduled performances. You'll play uh, ambient recorded background music only. Uh, you will not seek a change in class or an alteration without coming back here. Uh, you will not participate in pub crawls, no unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. I'll say that again, no, no boozy brunches, please. Um, and oh, that was Clint's timer. You're so fast, Clint. Um, and you'll, uh, if you have happy hour, it will end by seven. No wait lines, uh, staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering. You'll post the stipulation um, by your liquor license. Um, and I also added that you will use the reservations and texting systems system to keep customers from crowding in front of the establishment. That was something I think you agreed with Clint on and the block association. And that you'll close all outdoor dining allowed under the temporary open restaurants program and any other subsequent uses by 10 p.m. and not have any speakers or TV monitors. Does that all, all sound good? Uh, they were they were they indicated that they were going to have one television. Uh, this is sorry. This is only for um, uh, outside. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, um, that's a complaint we've gotten is people with the TVs outdoors. Understood. Understood. Yeah, my, yeah. My, my mistake. No, you're good. Um, okay. okay. Is, does that all sound good? Oh wait, Clint, go ahead. Did I miss something? I did have one thing, and I'm. This is probably my fault too. I did not put this in the agreement we had. They had, they did have a discussion. We had a discussion that they were considering, you know, I think we were saying two private events a month was, and I, you know, that was my fault that I did not put that in our agreement. I think I'm meant to after our discussion. Uh -huh. So I don't know if that's something. I think, I think we, we discussed four private events. Was it four? Yes. Okay. Is that something that we need to add into the SIPs, Mitchell? If, if you'd like, if you'd like that in, that's fine. Four per month? Yes. Okay. Any objections committee to that? David, go ahead. 
it's not about that. But um, has, has it changed since the application, <clears throat> the Sunday closing time? This says midnight. And oh, yeah, I think that they like that was the agreement that he did with Clint was to do 12 a.m. Sundays. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, anything else before I move to a vote? Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, going to a vote now for number 551 Avenue B. Michelle, yes. David? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Jesse? Yes. Paul? Yes. Herman. Yes. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, we'll send you the stipulations tomorrow. Please sign and return them expediently. Thank you very much, all the members of the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, number seven is, is Frank here now? I did, did admit him, so. Okay. So number seven, is everyone here? I see Frank's name on the thing. Frank's here. Hi, Frank. Okay, so we're gonna do number seven. Good evening. In the application in the chat. Okay, so it's an application for a wine and beer license at the premises located at 99 Avenue B between East 6th and East 7th Street. Um, certificate of occupancy of 97 people, um, four tables and 21 seats uh, with a 123, 23 foot bar. Do you know how many seats are at the bar? Uh, uh, food prepared in a food prep area served during all hours of operation. Um, there'll be live music, three, which I'll ask you about. Three bar stools. Okay. Thank you. Live music, um, but uh, five times a year, but every other time will be ambient recorded background music. Um, I should say that also this is a bookstore with a, a light, with a wine beer license. That's what we're doing here. So like a tavern bar bookstore. Um, this was previously Manitoba's, which was like a very long standing punk bar. Um, Susan knew of no real complaints from that um, space. Um, uh, we didn't receive any letters or anything, um, but the hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, and then I have two questions, which is can you describe the music a little bit more, what you're thinking about for live music? And um, uh, I know that you've worked, uh, Matt, at multiple places. And can you describe like what what you did at those those hospitality establishments? That would be helpful. Absolutely. We um, thanks for having me. By the way, um, we just wanted to have the ability to have um, you know sort of uh, singer songwriter nights. You know, acoustic guitar, keyboard. Uh, I think a good way to limit it is you know we we don't have the we don't have the ability, the, the intention, or the desire to do a you know, hardcore matinee or anything like I think a, 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 a good way to frame it is that, um, you know, we will never um, have any uh, stretched drums or anything. So any any quote unquote live music that we would offer is going to be at a comparable volume to the, uh, you know, the ambient recorded music that we're going to play. Um, and then in terms of my experience, um, I've been working in restaurants since 20, uh, since 2004. I started bartending at a sushi place in Gramercy called Haru. I was there for a few years. I worked at a little restaurant on uh, East First Street as a, as a bartender called uh, Joe Doe. It was there for about 10 years, you guys may remember. Um, I was in LA for a while working uh, as a captain, which is, as you may or may not know, kind of halfway between a server and a manager um, at a beautiful restaurant on the Sunset Strip called the Everly. Um, and then when I was back uh, in New York, I was working um, uh, well, with the uh, Happy Cooking Group, who is uh, Gabe Stolman. They do uh, Jeffrey's Grocery, where I was primarily at, but I also worked at um, Bar Sardine 
and then most recently at the Jones until we closed in December in a managerial capacity. And then again, um, when it reopened as um, Jolene. So I have about, I guess, going on um, 20 years experience in hospitality at this point. And um, this is the first time I'm striking. I'm also a uh, I'm also a, a fiction writer, master's, got a master's in fine arts from Columbia. So I'm sort of dovetailing my two areas of expertise by uh, opening the, uh, starting this printing press, which is going to kind of have its sort of, you know, headquarters out of this coffee shop that we're going to just uh, offer a little bit of beer and wine into the evening. Okay, thank you. That's, that's very helpful. Um, and I should also say that you're planning to have like, readings and poetry nights but that's not that's right yeah. yeah in terms of the scheduled events we're planning on doing yeah just uh um yeah uh, fiction poetry readings okay great thank you and just like same i said to the last applicant that if you plan if you say that if we say that you're going to open at 7 a.m all days that means that you must open at 7 a.m all days is that what you plan to do or would you like that it's a pretty early to commit to <laughs> um uh well i think there's a there's a chance that we might be um closed on mondays to start okay all right uh susan so i think just put 7 a.m and close by 12 a.m sun like tuesday to sunday you're on mute you're on mute susan sorry um he, we should have what days it's going to be open and closed Okay, so but and but you're so Tuesday to Sunday, Matt. Uh, yeah, the idea is to is to um is to start off closed on Mondays and then eventually to open on Mondays. Okay. Uh, if that's not if that's not too big of a that, problem, that's that's fine. I just want to make sure that what you want right, right. planning to do is accurate. That's that's the plan. that's the plan. Thank you. Okay, and seven a.m. all days. Yeah. Okay, David, go ahead. This I don't think bugaboo. Want I don't think you want to commit to 7 a.m. <clears throat> um, the, the hours of your license can be different than your must open by time. The must open by is so we ensure that there's some foot traffic. So you can say, you know, 10 a.m. or something like that. And then if you can't open at 7 a.m., you won't be in trouble. Oh, okay. Um, well, then let's change. Let's make it 9 a.m. Okay. Thank you can you. still Thank open you. at seven if you want. Yeah. Understand. That's a that's a great suggestion. Thank you. I mean, there's a coffee shop during the day, right? That's right. Okay. Cool. Um, any um, questions from the committee? Okay. Um. All right, anyone here from the public to speak on this item? This is number 799 Avenue B. Okay, hearing no one. Um, I'm gonna share the steps in that case. Um, make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay. So Matthew Lolly is a qualified representative of Moonless Nights. 99 Avenue B, wine, beer, and cider. You will operate a tavern, bar, bookstore, hours of operation 9 a.m. to 12 a.m., Tuesday to Sunday. Um, if you have open restaurants, outdoor seating will be 10 p.m. Um, you will install any rear, uh, you'll, sorry, close any front or rear facade doors at 10 p.m. No DJs, no promoted events, no event with a cover fee. Um, you may have up to five live music performances per year and scheduled readings, poetry readings promoted on uh, social media. Uh, you will not apply for an alteration without coming back. You will not seek a change in class without coming back. You will not participate in pub crawls. Jeanette, do you have a question? Yeah, it seems um, counter the, you can't have promoted events, but you can have promoted events. So it's really like third party promoted events. That's why I specified social media. That's like, a, we need to just change the steps form, honestly, to say third party promoted events, right, Susan? Yeah because that's what we asked for in the questionnaire. Um, so I can say, but not via third party promoters. Just and then on top of it, yeah. Okay. 
Um, you'll not participate in pub crawls or have party buses. You'll not have unlimited drink specials, no boozy brunches. Um, if you have a happy hour, on by seven, no wait lines, uh, staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering. You'll post the stipulation inside your business and you'll close all outdoor dining allowed under the temporary open restaurants program and any other subsequent uses by 10 p.m. all days and not have any speakers or monitors. Does that all look good? Matt, Matt you okay <clears throat> with the five live music? Fine, Benny. Are you yeah, okay with the five? Oh. Are you okay with yeah. the five? Yeah, it works for me. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the committee before we go to a vote? Um, I just want to ask a question uh, about the process. Um, I look at the first page of the application these days, and it's only say applying for a legal license. It doesn't state whether it's beer and wine or or an OP. Is that changed a long time ago or? Uh, it's on the 30 day reason? notice, I believe. Yeah, it's on the 30 day notice. I don't think it was ever on the questionnaire because I don't think we, we oh, didn't know. It's, it's just on the 30 day notice, which is described yeah, as- We better. already have that information. That's why we didn't put it in the question, questionnaire. Yeah. AKA that application. David, go ahead. So I'm wondering about this, where we now have some Tuesday through Sunday. He said that at first, wouldn't be opening on Mondays. <clears throat> um, are we forcing him to come back to us before he can start to open on Mondays? Or can we, is there a way to phrase this differently? The question impacted like the must open by time, which is a little confusing on the steps too. Anyway, I guess that's it. It's like the way that this is written here is he gonna have to come back to us before he can start opening on Mondays for a change in the license. I would say it depends on the hours somewhat. If um, it's the kind of thing I would generally um, email to Michelle and say, should we this be approved uh, not heard at committee? Yeah, I mean, David, we can't like give, tell him he has to be open on Monday if he's not gonna be open on Monday, so. I'll have to come back or vice versa, one. or at least send it. I was just wondering what what's going to happen. So you've already answered it that that, that Michelle will have a discretion to say <clears throat> that it will. Okay, good. Come yeah, back. I mean, if we have like no problems with it, you know, that sort of thing. like no like complaints from the community or anything about that the location, like likely yes, if it's the same exact operating hours. So uh, okay, any other questions from the committee? Okay, moving this to a vote in that case, um, again, number 799 Avenue B. Michelle, yes. Jeanette. Yes. Jesse. Yes. David. Yes. Herman. Yes. Paul. Yes. Okay, thank you um, for coming in and we'll send you the steps, please send them, uh, return them soon as soon as possible. Thanks everyone, thank you so much. Thanks, have a good night. Okay, all right. Um, all right, we're gonna, now we're gonna go, we're gonna do three, that's the last one we're gonna do out of order, then we'll do two, eight, nine. Okay, so number three, um, Gemini and Scorpio, six St. Mark's place, are you here? I am. Hello, Frank. Yeah, as am I. Hi, guys. Okay, great. Um, let me just drop the uh, application in the chat. Okay. All right, this is an application for a full on-premises liquor license. Uh, and the premise is located at 6 St. Mark's Place on the third and fourth floors, uh, which is between second and third avenues. 
Um, so this is a former, just, we actually heard an application for this location a couple months ago committee for a karaoke place. This was a karaoke spot. So that's how it's, it's formatted inside. If you're looking at the photos, um, it's a former karaoke bar. Um, and so this is a, a request for, um, uh, it's a cocktail art experience that are done in private rooms. There are 18 tables and 54 seats. Full kitchen, um, serving food during uh, serving American and international food during all hours of operation. No more than two televisions. Ambient recorded background music. Um, proposed hours of operation are close opening at 5 p.m. all days and closing by 12 a.m. Monday to Wednesday. And wait, I have this backwards. I, Monday to Wednesday and 2 a.m. Thursday to Sunday. Is that right? Okay. Um. Uh, this, the applicant has never previously been a license holder from what I could tell, but you have worked in the events business for 20 years, um, managing the Gemini and Scorpio loft in Gowanus where you threw immersive events. Um, there are no 301 complaints at this location and 39 residents who live within two blocks signed a petition in favor. Um, anything I said incorrectly there, Larissa or Frank? Um, I, I just want to give a bird's eye view, if, if I can, if that's sure. the right thing. Yeah, if you could just do like yeah. one or two minutes, if that's possible. Uh, yeah, it, it's not going to take long. So right, I do great, have extensive you. experience. Uh, it's 20 years of production, every aspect of production. Uh, I've got a lot of experience in set design myself, connected to a lot of artists in the art and set design world. And this is a, a combined experience of art and cocktails and food. This is something that we... Uh, we did in the pandemic when any larger scale nightlife was impossible. So from doing the kind of events we're used to anywhere from 50 to a thousand people, we had to scale down. So we did a one room version of this experience. It was called Plum Bl Blossom Parlor. It got really positive national press, like the one article that I allowed to run about it. And the idea was that pods of people can book into this room on their own and have this uninterrupted maskless experience with art and with craft cocktails and we just let them enjoy for an hour and a half so it's this model expanded to 16 different rooms and i know it's not a standard bar or restaurant so let me know if you have questions about that and i just wanted to clarify that we're not seeking specifically on premises because we're not a bar we are uh, seeking full liquor but catering because essentially the place operates by bookings only. You can't walk in there and just have a drink. You, you book in for those 90 minutes in advance. Okay, thanks. Um, Susan, do we need to specify that? We don't really have I, an option. I've actually never heard of a catering license used that way. I mean, Frank's obviously the expert in this. So, you know, if he, says it yeah if they're asking for a catering license you have to put that it's a catering license okay so you think we should say i will operate a catering like like just on the stipulation they're, they're because they don't have what does the 30-day notice say what kind of license have they applied for catering establishment a catering. what catering establishment oh so it's a catering establishment so yes you would say okay. uh, catering license okay Yeah, we've never done that one. Well, we've done in the past, but never in this, you know, <laughs> where it's uh, on premise. Uh, not a, yeah, not like a catering. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, cool. Um, anyone from the committee have any questions for the applicant? Anyone? Okay, well, I'll just ask. Um, typically, we don't like to do like the late, so we don't consider Sunday like a, a weekend night. Um, and it, it seems that you're asking for 2 a.m. to Sunday. Is that something that you're flexible on? Uh, the reason we're, oh, that's weird. The reason we're asking for the 2 a.m. on Sunday as well is because the latest booking we can have is then 12 a.m. And 12 a.m. is still a reasonable hour for a nightlife experience. Okay. Michelle, also, they're 90-minute they're 90 experiences. So that's 2 o'clock by 1.30, it's over. Okay. Okay, anyone from the committee have any questions, comments, concerns? 
Well, 1.30 or 2 a.m. is after midnight. What do we typically do on that particular block? <clears throat> or what was in the previous establishment, I guess, is the question. That block has a lot on it. Um, on this it later. Day. Yeah, I think it was 4 a.m. or 2 a.m. Later, I, I represented them. Mm. Um, you know, it's funny. I don't actually have, I don't remember from when we talked about this last time. Um, it's not in the resolution. Uh, we have a resident here. I don't know if she re would remember. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, before we. Okay. Go ahead, Susie. Uh, you're on mute, Susie, if you're talking. Yeah, so this has been um, a controversial space in the community. And uh, the last applicant um, was granted 12 a.m. on weekdays and 2 a.m. on Thursday through Saturday. We also had a stipulation about Sunday because people have to go to work on Monday. Um, so we also felt like, you know, Sunday was not a late night. Um, there are other concerns. Um, first of all, I'm not familiar with a catering license, so I have to do some research into how that works. Um, we only received a notification from the applicant on March 8th at 9.05 p.m. And it's not giving us enough time to canvas, you know, the neighbors and stuff like that. Two of the block association members can't be here because they don't know how to do, you know, meetings on Zoom. Um, the, uh, we circulated a petition um, for the application on October 10th. The tenants are still the same and they're still voicing the same concerns. With regards to soundproofing, um, it's always a promise that has fallen flat. The current soundproofing is not enough in case they're not in, you know, trying to improve on that. Um, now, we find a little bit alarming um, like right now, the model sounds great. And so far, I have to say it's one of the better proposals that we've seen for this space. Um, but what happens when COVID changes and this model changes with it? Um, one correction, there is a house of worship less than 200 feet from the back of the building. Um, Sunday nights, 2 a.m. is a concern. We would like to see midnight. Um, also the full OP um, we are only granting, you know, wine and beer licenses in that building, like Barcade has been in the building for a long time now, and they are operating on wine and beer. And how would that work? You know, is that in, in fairness to them and other establishments on the block? Obviously, could you, wrap, could you wrap it up, Susie, if you don't mind? Okay, the 500 foot rule has been violated many times. There is a stand up bar in the, in the um, you know, it's a long application. There's a stand up bar there. The private bookings, like they can get rowdy. So there are concerns there. Um, previous license, they do list Plum and Blossom Parlor. Was that not a licensed establishment? How does that work? They, they, the press does reveal um, mixed cocktails. So, you know, and it also shows live events. So I'm a little bit confused about the operations since that's the model that they're referencing um, as an example for this application. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, I would actually, I think I, I would be more comfortable too if we did at 12 a.m. on Sunday, just to be standardized. That's how we typically do it. I understand, so just like I said, we don't really consider it a, a weekend night. Um, uh, Larissa Frank, would that be, would you sign that? Uh, weekend. Sorry, Frank, do you want me to speak to that or do you want to speak to that? Depends on what you're going to say. <laughs> well, do you want to go first? You're my lawyer. I was going to suggest a compromise. Michelle, how do you feel about certain Mondays after holidays? Monday, Sundays before Monday holidays. Labor Day, Memorial Day, Martin Luther King, that kind of thing. I doubt whether the SLA is going to take those kind of hours. <laughs> That's no, the they difficult have, to enforce. <laughs> yeah, but they have on numerous applications. They already have. We've, we've never done that here. Well, we could always ask. I mean, one of the things you could say is um, if you decide to do that, which is not standard, 
I, I could certainly um, could have the SLI confirm that. And, and I think I think it's enforceable with any other step regarding hours. Steps posted on the wall. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just pull the committee then. All right. Um, uh, would you, committee, um, can you raise your hand or just say yes if you'd be okay with um, 2 a.m. before our holiday weekends, holiday Mondays? Working on my lap. We don't have to do that. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's. Okay. All right. So let's do that then. Opening no later than five p.m. all days and closing by twelve a.m. Sunday to Wednesday, except for Sundays before federal holiday Mondays. I mean, I don't even know how to describe that. We can actually list them. No, because they're different. I would. No, they're not different. I would just it's say federal, holidays. I would say federal holidays because there's federal, city, and state. Okay. 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 Any other questions from the committee? Can I actually respond to what Susie was asking? Because I, I do sure. in fact have a question. Yeah, on. if you don't mind just being, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. So the physical layout dictates the use of the space. We're not opening this uh, because we're planning for COVID to last forever. We're opening this this way because COVID taught us that this model works. So this one room version did really well. Uh, as far as the license on that model, it was run by donation and drinks were included. There were no direct drink sales. People just booked their time and donated money to, uh, to use the space. Uh, so we have no plans for changing this model, regardless of what happens with COVID. But we do need the full license because the craft cocktails are part of the experience. And the craft cocktails then subsidize the art. The idea is that we're selling these art tickets and the margin on liquor versus beer and wine is allowing us to, to then pay for it all. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, and uh, soundproofing, we actually have a detailed soundproofing plan. I, in fact, reached out to Susie in advance, just knowing that, of course, being next door, they were going to have questions. We have a temporary website set up where people can get in touch directly. I have a detailed uh, sound plan for my contractor that is linked on the site. And we're, we're planning to add absorbent fabrics, uh, air pockets. Uh, because each room operates simultaneously, soundproofing is important to us as well. People can't hear each other when they're in the room, but it'll be background music either way. We're putting tiny speakers into each room. Each guest brings in their own soundtrack. We're not going to wire the entire place for, for common sound. Okay, thanks. Susan, go ahead. Yeah, on the catering license, do people order and pay for each drink or does the fee cover whatever they drink? No, think of it as a wedding, Susan. That's what I'm afraid of. So they can kind of drink as much as they want. But no. They don't... no. Versus model is two drinks. Oh, so they so the fee covers two drinks and then they can order more if they want. Yes. Okay. But it's not an open or an unlimited bar, nothing like that. I go to different weddings and you go to. <laughs> okay, thanks for clarifying, Susan. Um, any other questions from the committee? Okay, um, I'm gonna set, share the steps form. Okay. So application for, uh, as we said, liquor, wine, beer, and cider, catering establishment at 6th St. Mark, so only the third and fourth floors. Um, opening no later than 5 p.m. all days and closing by 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday, except for Sundays before federal holiday Mondays. They may close, it may close at 2 a.m. Um, and closing by 2 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Make sure I, someone just make sure I did that all correctly. No outdoor space. Um, you will install soundproofing in um, uh, as necessary in consultation with a sound engineer. You'll have a closed fixed facade, no DJs, no live music, no promoted events, no cover fees, no scheduled performances, ambient recorded background music only. Um, 
you no know, party buses or pub crawls, no boozy brunches or other drink specials. Um, no happy hour or drink specials, no wait lines, staff person outside responsible for ensuring no loitering, um, and you will use a reservations and texting system to ensure that patrons do not uh, crowd outside the establishment. Susan, do you have another question? Yeah, uh, what about, um, might be important to have not audible in residents? Okay. I would say no sound, not no music. Anything else, committee? Michelle, Michelle, how can we guarantee no sound? That's a stipulation that we include. What does that mean, though? It I mean, means it's like specific than no sound. No sound from the premises? In people's apartments. We do this all the time. Yeah. Yes, LA, yes, LA accepts it. I know applicants who don't. Well, that's possible. All right. OK. OK, um, David, go ahead. Let me know if this is inconsequential, but the, the, the bit about um, <clears throat> a text messaging reservation system is not what she described. She described another system that would prevent, the reservation system would ensure that there's no crowds, but it doesn't involve texting. Correct. What does it? I don't, I don't, if it's inconsequential, it doesn't matter. No, I think David's right. So just reservation system? Yeah. Sort of this, the reservations and texting is the one that we created for this. So, um, all right, Susie, you already spoke. So, is there something specific that you want to make a comment on? Um, yeah, I'm just really concerned about the OP. Like, does that mean that other wine and beer licenses on the block can now apply for full OP just like that? Well, we can't stop people from applying for things, but every case, of course, is heard on a case by case basis. So, okay, thanks. Okay, anything else from the committee? Okay, going to move this to a vote in that case. Okay, Michelle, yes. Jeanette? Yes. Jesse? Yes. David? Yes. Herman? Yes. Paul. Yes. All right. Thank you all for coming. Um, we'll send you stipulations. Please sign and return them as quickly as possible. Thanks for having us. Have a good month. Thanks. You too. All right. Now we're going to go to number two, um, 145 Bowery, the Moxie. Um, Max, I saw you. Um, everyone else is here too. Yeah, they're all here. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, let me put the questionnaire in the chat. Where do you speak? Is my sound on? Yep, we can hear you now. Okay. Hey. Okay. All right, committee. This is our first um, hotel that we're doing together, so please pay attention so we can. You know, there's a lot of details. Um, which actually is my first question: is Is this a hotel license, Max, or is this? Yes, Michelle, it's a hotel license. Okay. Michelle, I know you usually do an overview and that's the way you want to proceed. That's fine. I did have, it, it, in the absence of that, since it's a hotel license, I did have like under two minutes of comments to make. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just run through the hits and then you can supplement anything that you need to. Okay. So, all right, so this is a newly constructed hotel on the corner of Boom and um, Bowery. Uh, if you've watched by there, you've certainly seen the construction um, in the past couple of years. Um, there are proposed to be six separate food and beverage areas within the hotel, um, which has it itself a pending certificate of occupancy of 1,169 people, 126 tables and 522 seats with five bars and 59 seats, 
seats spread across the whole place, but I bullet committee, I bulleted out in the resolution all the different parameters of each different place. Um, and so, you know, obviously there's no history of licensing at this location, but this is the sex, second Moxie Hotel in Community Board 3. The first one is on East 11th Street, um, which, um, you know, I talked to Susan about, and she said that anytime that there has been a complaint there, there, there have been minimal complaints, but whenever there have been a complaint, they've always been responded to expediently. Um, and, uh, you know, beyond that, the applicant has the Moxie East Village and then the uh, joint applicants are the Tau Group, which operates nightclubs and restaurants in New York and uh, LA, Vegas and abroad. Um, so just the broad contours of what this um, space will look like. There's a sub cellar lounge that's open till 4 a.m. all days um, with 11 tables and 62 seats and one bar. Then there's also a cellar restaurant on the floor just above it, um, 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. 38 tables of 198 seats, one bar with 11 seats. And then the ground floor, there are two spaces. Um, one is a lounge open till 4 a.m. all days. And the other one is um, just a hotel bar, which is also open till 4 a.m. Then there's, the, this is the most consequential for us committee is the top floor. So there's going to be an indoor lounge that's open from 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. all days um, that has 14 tables and 64 seats and one, um, bar with 14 seats. And then there is an outdoor balcony that they're proposing to keep open until 12 a.m. all days um, with 11 tables and 22 seats and soundproofing will be installed. Um, there is a detailed sound study in the, uh, the application packet. I think it's rider C if I'm remembering correctly, but what they said was uh, uh, all, the recommendation was to only use four small speakers with woofers, no subwoofers. They should not exceed six inches and they should be place no higher than three feet above the roof. Um, I know that the applicant did outreach to the community, but I'm not sure if anyone actually attended. Like I, there are mailers and, and flyers up. I'm not sure if anyone actually ever ended up attending the meetings. The last I had heard they had not, but um, that's not for lack of trying, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, anything I missed there, Max, or you wanna add? Yeah, sure, Michelle, if I could just take two minutes just to supplement what you said. Um, feel free to cut me off if I'm taking too long. I just wanted to say hello to you and thank you, Susan, uh, Herman, faces that I've seen many times before. Uh, I see a lot of new faces of the committee too. Uh, my name is Max Bookman. I'm an attorney with Pizetsky and Bookman and we represent uh, the applicant here. Um, with me tonight is, is Megan Boberts from Lightstone Group. That's one of Moxie's owners and uh, Judy Tepperberg of Tau Group, which is, as you heard from Michelle, is the F&B manager. Um, this is, my understanding too is that this is the first hotel license that this committee as a group is looking at. So despite the fact that there's a lot of detail and Michelle did an excellent synopsis of the detail, uh, at its core, what we're looking at here is, I know Michelle said six uh, spaces, but the way I look at it, it's really five spaces. And that's very common with a hotel liquor license, which covers the entire hotel space. Um, part of a hotel liquor license is you're required to have a restaurant on premises and we satisfy that requirement. So the reason why, why my count is five is because um, we have the sub cellar lounge, which is 26 feet below ground. It's been described to me as a bunker. Um, uh, we have the sub, we have the cellar restaurant also below ground. So that's good for something that you would typically like to hear because you're not going to hear it. It's on, it's all below ground. Um, Ground floor, as Michelle described, there's a ground floor lounge, which we're calling a silver lining and a regular hotel lobby bar. And then on the, the top floor, uh, we broke that out separately as the top floor lounge and the, the little balcony, because on the little balcony, we're gonna have separate hours of operation, but that's just one um, F and B operation. It's just the balcony is just a little uh, add on to the, the top floor lounge. Uh, so that's the five, um, just very briefly, uh, Many of you know about Moxie because not only are they in our city, but they're also in your community uh, with East, East Village. It's Moxie by Marriott. It's an established hotel brand. They have locations all across the country. Um, and you also know Tau Group because Tau Group is involved in the Moxie East Village as well. And uh, they're together, all told, well-known, responsible, um, corporate-owned hotel operators. Tau Group is owned by Madison Square Garden Group. Um, the team here is important as well. And what I mean by that is uh, not only the higher level team, but um, the uh, general manager of the East Village location who's on the call tonight, Leo, he is being brought over to open this new location on Bowery. So on day one, you're going to hit the ground running with the team that knows your community, knows uh, the issues that, that matter to you. 
Um, and that's something that I think is typically um, uh, not something that you always see. Just one last point. Um, outreach, Michelle touched on it. I just want to supplement a little more on the outreach effort. So also on the call is Mark Thompson from Capolino, who is um, uh, one of the best uh, community outreach uh, uh, organizations in the city, and they did a robust outreach effort. And Michelle is right that um, one element of the outreach um, did get too many hits, and that was the, the flyering that they did of the neighborhood. They went all the way down to Grand Street, up Bowery, to Ken Mayer and Delancey. They went on Broom Street and flyered in English and in Cantonese, excuse me, and, and, and uh, because of the number of Chinese speakers there, um, Zoom meetings that they, they sought to hold to introduce local residents to the concept um, was not well attended at all, but there were flyers literally everywhere. Um, and more um, formal um, community groups that are typically the subject of outreach. Uh, Mark and Megan and the team also reached out to um, Michelle Campo, who I know is on the call and can speak for herself with the Bowery Alliance. Um, she had some questions about uh, the top floor uh, balcony. She wanted us to close all the windows when the DJ is playing, close windows after the balcony closes, no DJ outside. Those are all things that we're fine with and can incorporate into our stipulations with you. Um, met with David Carbone, who I understand is also on this call. Um, Chinatown Partnership, Wellington Chan, Chinatown Core Group, NYT, NYPD's precinct. Um, they did petitions as well, um, with the petitioners speaking English, Spanish, and Cantonese, and those petitions have been supplied. Uh, and last but not least, um, they, as Michelle mentioned, not only did we conduct a, a sound study, but we also hired Sam Schwartz to do a traffic study. Um, we'll, be we'll be following the recommendations of both those studies, and the recommendations of the traffic study are on page 75 of the PDF that we uh, provided. Um, I know I keep saying last but not least, but this is the real last one um, in terms of corporate responsibility and stewardship, which is super important to both of these groups, both Moxie and uh, Tau Group. Um, they've been in touch with uh, the Lower East Side bid, Tim from the Lower East Side bid to discuss ways to improve the cleanliness of Sarah Roosevelt Park, improve lighting in the area. They've had similar conversations with Susan. Um, they're committed to local hiring. They've been in touch with Housing Works and Bowery Mission. Um, so I know, Megan, I think I hit all the points. Anything else you wanted to, to briefly add? Yeah, we, we've also we've spoken with with Lesson um, and David Garza's group on on local hiring, um, and you know we're 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 here for for anyone that wants to you know reach out to us and talk about ways to improve the neighborhood. Thank you. Susan, go ahead. Um, yeah, when it comes to the um, traffic issues, um, I assume that you will follow the precinct's recommendations over Sam Schwartz. Of course, precinct comes first. <laughs> Susan. Um, OK, anyone from the committee have any questions? Okay, I'm just personally looking forward to that sidewalk bridges coming down someday soon. Uh, you can walk on both sides of the street. Um, anyone on from the committee before I go to the community? Uh, I saw the list count of all the expected occupants of the different places. Do you expect that they would be there all at the same time, they are mostly guests from the hotel, or are you going to have um, some kind of event that would bring all those people there Let me at take that one finish. time or alternate times? Sorry, Herman, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, uh, let me just... Let me just address that generally, and if, if, many, if Megan wants to add anything after I speak, um, she can. Um, the hotel's guests are primary, so the occupancy that we gave you is for a, a, a full, for to the total hotel is for a fully booked hotel, and obviously they wish to be fully booked, plus have all their venues occupied at the same time. There won't be promoted events, however, so there, you know, although obviously um, members who are people who are not uh, guests of the hotel will be occupying different F&B venues as well. We're not going to be having special promoted events. We're not gonna be using outside promoters. Um, we're not gonna have uh, events that 
are particularly designed to draw in people from outside the hotel. But just like in the East Village location, you know, anyone is free to uh, come to the restaurant, to the bar, and uh, we expect that people will. And those are maximum uh, I, occupancy, Herman, like uh, allowable by by code. So, you know, th that's not going to happen every night. Bye. Uh, one thing, one statement that I think of uh, south of Houston Street, I think it's so oversaturated with, with hotels and of course bars and stuff like that. But when at the point somebody's going to say, we already have 30 hotels down here, why bring another one? At some point or the other, you know, that has to happen. Well, the city council passed a law requiring a special permit for hotels, so it might have already happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better answer than I was going to. We give started that. before the, we started before the new yeah. zoning regulation. Okay. Thank you, Herman. Um, okay. Any other questions from the committee before we go to the public? Okay, Michelle Campo, go ahead. Michelle, you're muted. Okay, go yeah, ahead. I, I, you muted me. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, although you said, you know, nobody reached out to them and nobody met with them, we met with them last Friday. We had scheduled a meeting for several days. So the Bowery Block Association, three of us met with three of them. <laughs> I think it was, sorry, Megan and, um, and, and company. And we, we spoke about several things and we did speak about, you know, outreach to people in the area and uh, the homeless and Sarah Roosevelt Park, the condition of Broom Street and that cars should not be idling on Broom Street because that could be really nasty. But what I, what I want, you know, when I was looking at the questionnaire and we had spoken about TV monitors, we were told there would be none. I see on the questionnaire, that's five. That's one thing that I'm kind of upset about. Um, also weight lines and the base on, on the sound system. And the fact that it says something about the ground floor lo lounge outdoor seating, which we had spoken about and wasn't to be, is my understanding uh, at the time. And, um, also the hours now, and it says so on the questionnaire that the, that the doors and windows will be closed at 10 o'clock every night, 10 o'clock every night. And the hours on all the different venues, I think my estimation is that weeknights, it should be midnight and on the weekends should be two, not four o'clock every night, definitely not four o'clock every night for everything. I mean, that's just, it's oversaturation and, and the Bowery already is nuts these Michelle, days. Michelle, if you could wrap it up, that'd be great. Well, I'm trying, okay? <laughs> trying really hard. Um, but, and it also says something about accordion doors. Is anybody actually listening to me when I speak? Because I've noticed that sometimes, you know, when members of the community speak, people just tune out. That's just my observation. Okay. Uh, TV monitors should be none. I said that already. And on the seventh floor suite, which is something ha that has an open outdoor component, there should be some stipulations about sound attenuation on, the, on that floor when, the, when that area is rented out. And I'll leave the rest to Mitchell and to David Carbone. Thank you. Thanks, um, Max or Megan, you could, do you wanna answer some of those questions? Sure, um, Megan, I'll answer everything, but for the suite, um, you can answer that part. So, um, Michelle, um, TVs, no TVs outdoors. Um, if there was a miscommunication there, then that's what it is. Um, there will be TVs inside the hotel, but not outdoors. Um, that's, not what I, that's not what was my understanding. There would be no TVs, period, case closed. It's not a sports bar, that's what Megan said. Definitely not a sports bar, but we do yeah, have um, and not no TV. You said no TVs. 
Uh, maybe that was a miscommunication, Michelle. It's no TVs outdoors. We do have TVs in the business studios um, for meetings. Um, Next. Well, let me just speak about that, Megan. We're, we are going to have TVs in each of the indoor spaces. We allow for them. Yeah, typically the private dining room would have a TV. People will have events. Um, it, it's really, you know, business related. We're seeing a lot of business um, events. Right. My, my observation, the my observation is typically TVs are, are considered synonymous with sports bar. And so if there's a way that, Michelle, we could balance what, what Megan has said which is what the TVs will be used for while still making clear that we're not, none of these venues are sports bars. I think maybe that's a, a decent compromise. And of course, no TVs outside. So that's the, that's the TV's point. Um, on the outside, on the downstairs, uh, typo, uh, there was a previous initial discussion internally that we had about looking for outdoor space uh, downstairs, but we decided not to go ahead with that. And that shouldn't be on the uh, questionnaire. So the spot that you accurately pointed out, Michelle, that said outside on the downstairs should be a no instead of a yes. We could make sure that correction is in um, stipulations. Um, on the 4 a.m., look, here's what I have to say about 4 a.m. I mean, I understand typically the issue with 4 a.m. And obviously every case needs to be heard on its own uh, grounds and with all the context in mind. And I think what makes this case different than your typical case where you have some you know, bar that wants to open in, in you know, 4 a.m. is number one, um, the need for hotel guests who are going to be arriving from all over the country and all over the world uh, to be able to be served. So it's not uncommon at all. And I know you know this too, for hotels to have uh, 4 a.m. indoors is typically the outdoor areas in the hotels that are subject to earlier hours for obvious reasons. And so it's that, 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 that 4 a.m. Uh, red flag, if you will, for a, a standalone sort of bar or restaurant is not, does not always translate over to hotels. And the second thing I would say to that is, these are people who you know, or at least the community board knows. Um, these are not people who are coming into your community district for the first time who you've never heard of. Not only are they known quantities in New York City, but they're known in your community. I mean, they're in the East Village already. They've established a good track record there. And so I think they ought to get the benefit of, of the doubt in, in a case like that. Um, Megan, do you want to talk about the suite? Yeah, we're not asking for a liquor license at the suite. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, again, it's a business, um, it's a business rental, um, people come along with a larger group and they'll need a, a larger place to meet in a more hospitality like setting. But if there are noise that does occur from these meetings or these get togethers, who does anything about that? Is that the, um, I, do, I do. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really a, an indoor. Um, it's really an indoor venue. I mean, we we will um, sit it out, you know, outside and make sure. Um, and you know, we have large glass walls to protect, um, you know, the terrace. But uh, th these are not nightlife type venues. And what I saw in there about accordion doors. Will there be accordion doors on this suite? No, there's just operable doors on the suite. The only, um, I, I think it's just a checkbox issue. The 16th floor has a sliding glass door system sliding glass. from the interior to the exterior. Okay, because, you know, sound is one hell of a, I'm not going to say it, you know, problem. Uh, and yeah. you know, on, the, on the seventh floor, uh, there are residences all around that you do not have to be higher than this in order to hear this sound. And there are families with small children. I know we've spoken about this at the meeting and I yep. don't know how you do anything to ameliorate that. Or can you, or will you? Um, well, we'll, we'll always provide um, you contact information if you don't, if, if there's an issue no. with operations. I mean, we're, we're training our staff um, to be good members of the community. Um, you know, Michelle, I mentioned this to you. I, I live downtown. I've got two kids in public school. You know, I, I don't want my neighbors making noise either. Like, mm -hmm. and we're, and I'm very involved in the operation. So, you know, we're here for you. If you don't like what we're doing, we're, you know, call us or, you know, we'll fix it. Have your number. If, if there's a call. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, the next person I see is Mitchell. Mitchell, go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, I uh, live on the Bowery. Um, uh, my name is Mitchell Grubler, and uh, I, um, I'm with the Bowery Block Association. I'm also a public member of the Landmarks Committee. Uh, uh, we did have that uh, Zoom meeting with uh, Megan and um, the other uh, staff. Uh, I um, I just wanted to uh, make sure about the um, stipulation uh, because the questionnaire says ground floor lounge outdoor seating. And um, Megan told me that that sidewalk cafe was not going to happen, but it's still in the questionnaire. So you might want to make sure that that's uh, stipulated. Yeah, that, that should come off. I, I, that's what I told Michelle already, that it's coming off. Yeah. Now, these accordion doors on the 16th floor out to the terrace, um, you said that the terrace is going to close at 10, at 12. So will those accordion doors and other doors to the terrace be closed at 10 p.m.? Because you do answer yeah. in the questionnaire yeah. doors and windows to close at 10 p.m. Yeah, so, so Mitch, the, what we take from that questionnaire is that at 10 p.m., the terrace, the, those doors will be closed. They're obviously still operable, and so people can still use those doors to access the terrace from the inside to the outside until 12 when we shut the whole thing down. But yes, we honor that portion of the stipulation that says starting at 10, those doors are not wide open. Are the doors self-closing? Uh, Michelle, could you, excuse me, Megan, could you answer that? Yeah, they are. All right. Um, also, um, the uh, question about out, outside weight lines was not checked. You're going to have so, outside weight lines? No, so no, we're not. And this is something that we, the reason we didn't check it is because we address it in, in more detail. Um, I know we gave a lot of material, so it's okay. But it, um, uh, on page 75 to 76 of our um, submission, uh, we talk about our um, weight line policy. And so um, it's important for hotel guests that we don't have outside weight lines. And so we have enough space inside the hotel to make sure that there's no uh, queuing outside. All right, and, and, and um, Mitchell, we have that little area south of the of the property as well, right? That that's on our property line, but it you know we can pull people off the street and onto our property, and that covered uh, right. yard. Yeah. So, right. do you anticipate right. lines like that? Uh, you know, I'm, we're not. So, sorry, let me just address it because I, I misspoke. Because typically, typically they don't. Typically, a hotel doesn't have something like that. So when I say outside weight lines, what I what I mean, what I meant to say was on the public sidewalk, because that's generally what we're dealing with in these meetings. Like you don't want outside weight lines on the public sidewalk, congesting the sidewalk, getting in people's way. So they will not have how they will not have weight lines on the sidewalk. To Megan's point, if there is a need to have people wait outside at all, which generally the goal is not to, because we have enough space inside to have people queue. We still won't have them on the public sidewalk because we do have this little um, pathway, which is within the property line uh, to put people on. But um, that's a that's a backup plan. I mean, the main plan is to have people uh, wait indoors because we have the room and, for it. And uh, lastly, I would just uh, uh, reiterate what Michelle said about um, a 4 a.m. closing time for all these venues is not being a good neighbor. Mm -mm. Okay, thank and you. Can uh, I Michelle, add one thing? Can very, I add very quickly, you've already- I, yes, like 10 there's minutes. another member of our group which who doesn't really know how to use this, but he lives on the block of Broom Street. I'm here. Across. Oh, there's David. And thank you, let him speak. And I just wanna say that the building to the south of this of this hotel is an SRO building that's been there forever. So whoever's queuing up is going to be right next to these people who've had a hard enough life, you know, and this is the little piece of space they have to lay their heads down in. Okay, so, thank you. You know, a late night is not the same for everybody. So speak, right. David. Thanks, Michelle. David, go ahead. Um, 
internet connection on my and um, let me just so basically we're having a hard time hearing you hard time hearing. yeah hold on do you have multiple devices was, signed in? is this better are you signed in twice yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, Turn the sound off. Michelle did, I think it's possible. possible. Are you in the same room as Michelle? No. I just muted his, um, like the one that says David Carbone. I'm hoping that we're getting the audio from two places. So I maybe you can hear him. Well, let's let Susan go while he figures it out. Susan, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, since I deal with the problems all the time, just emphasize the difference between the hotels and a standalone um, nightlife business. Um, it should be all contained. So, I mean, there are people up in the hotel at four and five and six a.m. You shouldn't, you know, if it's run well, and I have no reason to think they won't, you shouldn't know if the restaurant's open at 4 a.m. or not. Um, I would suggest that you do not have a backup plan of people waiting outside. Um, frankly, the biggest problems with hotels is when there's a celebrity there and everyone starts gathering a, around to uh, get autographs. Um, and uh, with the Moxie on 11th Street, we haven't had one single issue with any of the restaurants or any of the noise. The only issues we had were with deliveries um, and that kind of operational thing, which re were responded to within, within 12 hours. I mean, not just responded to, they were taken care of within 12 hours. So I, I, it's sort of bothered me that this was being looked at as a standalone nightlife and not um, being judged as a hotel. Thanks, Susan. That's helpful context. Um, anyone from the committee have any questions after hearing about this? I don't. Uh, oh wait, David Carbone, you're back. Can you try your sound again? Um, David, you took your. Do you want to try your sound again? This camera's on. Okay, committee, do you have any questions while we see if you can figure this out? No, but a question, but I would echo what Susan says regarding the hotels, because as I was looking at where the four o'clock um, venues would be, they are either in the sub sub basements, sub basements, and, uh, and most people will not know that anything is happening down there if they haven't gone in the hotel and go to those spaces. Uh, unless all the people would come out at the same time on the sidewalks, then that would be a problem. I'm happy to. Okay. Thanks, Herman. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I think it's just really important. I mean, I know that that's a complaint that has happened from the public hotel was that they were letting folks queue up outside in the parking lot um, beneath 11 Stanton. And so we, or 10 Stanton, excuse me. And so, you know, we really think it's important that that does not happen here. Um, so we, we trust you that you, you don't do that. You won't do that, I should say. I would, and I would just, I would just add to, you know, to that point that, you know, you know, again, for the committee, I mean, the hotel operators, one of their major concerns, which you don't have when it's just a standalone bar or restaurant is their guests, um, our guests, some of them will be coming at all hours of the night, but others will be sleeping and they're going to be paying good money to have a good night's sleep. So that's part of the reason why, um, generally speaking, hotels can be trusted a little more to have later hours, but specifically in this case, the fact that the you know, the restaurant and the sub cellar lounge are subterranean, so they are underground, no sound, no noise can escape to Herman's point. And then the, the point that Herman made about, you know, people all leaving at the same time, I think that's actually, you know, respectfully, you know, that's more of a concern when it's a, um, 
a place like a catering hall where uh, you've got an event that ends at a certain time and everybody spills out onto the street all at the same time. Um, there'll be some people still sticking around late at night, but there are others who, who won't be. So there will be a staggering uh, of the people leaving. Great, Susan, go ahead. Yeah, I, I would suggest that we not have any waiting or outside. Um, I don't know what Michelle meant by an SRO, per, perhaps she's talking about a safe haven. Um, and I agree with the sentiment, but I think all the waiting and queues should be inside and not have outside as a backup plan. Yeah, I agree. Um, David, do you wanna try again? Let me see if we can hear you. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, go ahead. Good. Uh, well, Michelle did cover a lot of stuff. I was concerned, although I may have missed some of the most recent conversation, of taxis and Ubers and where, where in fact they would be uh, to picking up and dropping off. And I'm, I'm hoping that would be the Bowery rather than Broom. That's one, that's one issue. Uh, I think the, the sound on the 16th floor is largely with the seventh. Did you okay. hear that? Yeah, no, I, was I, 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 just, I didn't want to interrupt you. I wanted to let you finish, and I wanted to address the points. Okay, that you were I'm, I'm done. Yeah, go ahead. You can answer. Yeah, so we're working with Uber. Um, Uber has a way for, for hotels um, to uh, have a selected drop-off point. So when people put in our address, the cars go to a particular point. And that's going to be on Bowery, won't be on Broom. Um, that's part of uh, I don't know if this is a specific recommendation, but that's part of the general gist of the traffic study as well is to avoid broom. So Bowery, which can handle us, um, and as part of our, our planning is gonna be the, the drop off uh, point. Um, on the hearing from a few people, Susan, um, Michelle, uh, I think Herman as well about the um, outdoor queuing, you know, on the private property. Um, Look, it's a backup plan. It's not the main plan. We have a lot of room inside. Um, could I suggest a compromise? One of the uh, things that they were already planning on doing, but I don't think has made it into our presentation, um, was that they were going to build a fabric enclosure um, for the uh, outdoor space um, so that it's comfortable in, in all weather. So if we have that up um, at all times, can we have backup? outdoor queuing in that enclosure. Ask Mark Thompson how well that works. That's what, that was the problem with the public was that they did the same yeah. thing. It didn't That's work. That's exactly they, what I'm referring to. They it didn't use very terrible. good. Yeah, they didn't use the right stuff. They're, it's they, you can get it, It's not even insulated there. I shouldn't say that, but um, you can get insulated material that works much better. Than with with that. Thing. I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to... Michelle, is that, could I ask Michelle Capo, what are you referring to as an SRO? Is it the safe haven? Uh, I don't know what you mean by safe haven. I'm, I'm talking about a place where rooms are to rent by the evening, by the night. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Well, you have them for every, every year, Lions houses. Yes, they have them, you know, not for nefarious purposes, but for to sleep in a safe room by yourself or you know, with chicken okay. wire or whatever, but it's so, not- I don't know what that is. It's not a shelter. It's not a shelter. I didn't think we had any, yes, sir. Mark, do you know what it is? Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's a hotel um, by name only. Okay. Um, you probably have a lot of DOB complaints about it. And it's mostly for shift workers who travel to other cities to work in restaurants um, for a few days, they come back. Um, some senior citizens were there. It's right. um, it's okay. not the Sun, not the Pacific. No, not Michelle. The sun. I don't know if you know the name of it or not. I That's okay. I, I get the so, idea. You know, I get yeah. the idea. I I would still suggest strongly that you not plan to have people waiting outside. You have a hotel. There should be somewhere inside that people can. So wait. let me let me just address that because you know in the old days when this was in person, I used to get to whisper things to my clients and, and yeah. we get to talk that way now. You're supposed texting. to text. Supposed now, well, to that, text. That's what we're doing, but it's harder. It's not easy to <laughs> listen to everybody and text all at the same time with my phone going off. So um, uh, look, 
it's reasonable. Um, you know, it wasn't our, it was not our plan. Uh, it was never our plan A. It was always a plan B, but we hear what you're saying. So um, if that's um, important to everyone on the committee, we could add that as a step. And I see Michelle, you. Yeah, too. that's important to me just because of our experience at the public hotel and, you know, we don't want a repeat of that. So David, go ahead. Did you want to say something on this? I was going to say it's important. Thank you. Heard. We hear you. Thank you. Um, okay. Any other questions from the committee? Concerns? Okay. Um, committee, you've seen the resolution. I read through most of it already. Um, I'm going to share the stipulations form to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Um, are these principles all correct? Should I put these all in here, Max? Sorry, is this too small? It's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> Megan, David, Jason, and Noah. Um, Should I put just one? You just have David on my end. Yeah, let's just put, let's just put David, oh, give, it, yeah. give it to Megan, um, and uh, Jason and Noah. That's fine, Judy, right? Yes. Okay. So those names are fine. Okay, great. So this is liquor, wine, and beer, hotel with multiple food and beverage operations, with the kitchen open and serving food during all hours of food and beverage operations. Um, we run through the hours, but sub seller lounge, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. all days. Seller restaurant, 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. all days. The ground floor lounge, 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, the hotel lounge, ground floor lounge, 9 a.m. to 4 a.m. And then the top floor lounge indoor open from 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. all days. Um, I guess I put in here the, um, Susan, this is going to confuse the SLA if I do this differently, probably. Um, I'll put this up here twice, um, that the uh, outdoor part will be um, only open till 12 a.m. Um, but as we discussed, you would close the any interior doors at 10 p.m. Um, your plan calls for 22 staff to ensure security. You'll install soundproofing and you submitted a plan. Uh, you'll close any front or rear facade doors at 10 p.m. That's what we're referring to. Um, no promoted events, no cover fee events, no scheduled performances. You may have entertainment level music in the sub cellar lounge only. No DJs or TVs in the outdoor rooftop balcony and all windows will be closed if there are DJs in the indoor rooftop um, area, live music up to 12 times per year at special events only. Um, I don't know why I didn't check these. You'll not participate in pub crawls or have party buses. No unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. If you have happy hours, they will end by seven. No wait lines outside, as we discussed at length. Staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering. I go into more detail below. You'll close all outdoor dining allowed under the outdoor temporary restaurants program and any other subsequent uses by 10 p.m. all days, not having any speakers or TV monitors, maybe a little bit repetitive, but worth it to keep it there. Um, you'll have a dedicated security staff member monitor the efficiency of pickup drop-off activity on Bowery. You'll have a dedicated towel staff member to manage guests on the sidewalk, and you will use a texting reservation system to keep patrons from crowding the sidewalk. Um, yeah. Do we need the texting for crowding the sidewalk for a hotel when everyone's going to be inside? Well, didn't we just discuss that though? That they're going to use texting if people don't want to wait inside? Um, I, maybe you did I miss that? Did that I, did I misunderstand that? Something else. We didn't well, we talk at all about, about texting. texting. That was your other applicant. Yeah. Yeah, that was the other applicant. Wait, you were just talking about texting like 30 seconds ago. No, did I miss no. that? Nobody was talking about texting. Other applicants. I talked about, I told them since they couldn't whisper to their client, they should text. Oh, oh, yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're God. right. I was talking about texting. Sorry, but my own. <laughs> yeah. They were talking about telling secrets. <laughs> okay. Whew. I thought I was going nuts. I was like, what? Okay, okay, yeah. So we, we don't want people on the sidewalk at all. They don't need. To okay. Wait, let me, all right. Oh, hold on. Now I need to edit this because <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> All right. As you're typing that in, I'll say, Michelle, that all looks 
right to me. I'm sitting here with what we submitted and, and, and trying to go fast because I know you have other business to get to. So that all looks right. Obviously, we'll scrutinize it when you get it, give it to us. And if there's one minor thing that's off, I'll let you know. But no, I don't see anything. I'm going to have off. David sign this too. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. They're going to get it to us probably tomorrow or the next day. Okay, great. Any other questions, comments, concerns from the committee? Um, this, I don't know if this is relevant or not. Um, as I'm listening to all these um, businesses that's been established in the neighborhood, um, I just want to ask Susan, is the operation with the uh, combined groups that um, looking for employment for <coughs> community residents still active? Yes, they are working with Lesson. Minute Hotel looks at us. I, we, I connect them with Lesson. They have experience working with Lesson. And I think someone from uh, Henry Street and Lesson is actually on the call. But yes, that's all happening. Okay. With Gaspar. Yes, I would never let them not do that. <laughs> and thank you for referring them to us. Okay. Can I say one thing? Just one thing. Like yeah, 10 seconds, you? please. I, okay. Okay. Um, Michelle, it's going to be, it's going to be David who signs this, not Megan. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this is just the contact or no, oh. should this be? That's fine. That's fine. No, that's fine. Con right. Megan contact is fine. My bad. Yeah, this is the contact. The top one is this. Yeah, okay, you're right. Terms. Yeah, keep it as is. My my mistake. No worries. Is this to send the um, the stipulations to for signing? Yeah, should it be the person who's signing it? This one. We generally send to Max or to the whoever the lawyer is. And let them deal with that. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Um, all right. Hold on, I'm just calling Paul because he is lost his internet. If he looks up. Okay. Um, not working. Can you speak for a minute? A second? Two yes, seconds. go ahead. Yes, Thank go you. ahead. I just want to add that I, I wanted to thank Mark and Megan for a nice meeting on Friday. And uh, I don't want anybody to be offended by anything we had to say today because, you know, this is our homes. So, but we had a very nice give and take and dialogue and, and, I, and we appreciate that. We do. Thank you, Michelle. We appreciate it. It was a great conversation. I think that um, yeah, you know how to get a lot in of touch bases with and A lot of different yeah. uh, factors of the Bowery. That was good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, we look forward to working with you, Michelle. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna move this to a vote. Um, Michelle, yes. Jeanette. Yes. Jesse. Yes. David. Yes. Herman. Yes. Paul. Did I go back? No. Um, okay, Paul is not voting on this one. Um, thank you guys. The motion carries. Um, we'll send you the stipulations and um, please re reply uh, expediently, as I always say. Shout out to yes for me. Oh, there you are. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, you're thank fine. You. Tech issues. Um, okay. Thank you, everyone who came out for this. Um, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You Okay, Thank so I, we're actually gonna go to number nine next um, because we're still counting the signatures for El Posto Acanto. Um, uh, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. Uh, we, I'll be right back. Uh, everyone feel free to do the same if they'd like to. Be right back.
Okay, thanks for bearing with me. Okay, as I noted, we're gonna to go to number nine, 191 Orchard Street. Are the applicants, is the applicant present? Yes, we're here. Okay, great. Just gonna drop the uh, application in the chat. Okay, my dog is doing that weird reverse sneezing thing that dogs do. Um, okay. All right. We actually started to hear this last month committee um, uh, and they withdrew at the meeting to uh, do more community outreach. Um, so I don't know if you remember that, but I will go through it again. Uh, okay. So it's an application for a uh, full on-premises liquor license at 191 Orchard Street between Houston uh, Street and Stanton Street. Uh, there's no uh, certificate of occupancy at the moment or letter of no objection. Uh, the application asks for 12 tables and three counters in size, while well, 12 tables outside for indoor capacity of 58 people. Rosa, could you mute yourself, please? Um, I thought I did. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, it's for shareable plates of American comfort food, serving food um, till 1 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 3 a.m. Thursday to Saturday, four TVs, DJs, and music at both background entertainment level. There are 37 full OP licenses within 500 feet. Um, sorry. Okay, so this location, as we talked about last month, um, was previously the Sixth Ward, which was granted a license in 2007 and lost its license in 2015 after uh, having its license revoked by the SLA. The Sixth Ward was a known problem to the community board um, with SLA complaints about operating beyond stipulations, operating below the uh, operating beyond the legal capacity um, without applying for a certificate of occupancy and using an illegal backyard that did not meet DOB requirements. Um, the applicant that we're here tonight for is the owner and operator of the cabin bar at East on East 4th Street, um, which came before this committee in May 2018. Uh, we received several, the committee received several emails about the cabin bar describing illegal parties in the backyard, including cigar parties that caused noise and air issues for residents in proximity. And there were 11 301 complaints at the cabin bar with NYPD uh, necessary, action necessary since 2018. Um, uh, I don't think, I think that Susan um, is taking a while. Yep, Susan dropped off, but she reported to me um, that uh, this applicant has been unwilling to work with the community board to mitigate the conditions that have been causing complaints and that he's been unwilling to work with um, the, the, the block associations in the vicinity as well. And we received 55 um, opposition letters organized through the dwellers and also a dwellers representative sent a letter in opposition you know, just detailing the many issues with the sixth ward um, while, you know, stating that the, it's known that the applicant is operating outside of stipulations at the cabin bar and should not be rewarded with another license. We received um, several emails from a resident of 191 Orchard Street who detailed all the problems that they went through with the sixth ward, asking for us to deny this applicant because of all those problems. Um, and uh, we also heard, and I don't know if Clint is still here, but last month we heard from, and, I'll, and we heard, got an email from Clint um, about, from the East 4th Street Lower Avenue B Block Association about the problems that they've had with the applicant at his operations on Cab, uh, at Cabin on East 4th Street. Um, and for example, that they are not supposed to have live music and have live music anyway, and, um, you know, including using the backyard and having crowds on the, on the, Sidewalks. Um, uh, the proposed hours of operation are, um, I have the wrong hours in here, but <clears throat> closing 2 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 4 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Um, if that sounds right, Rosa, um, anything I missed or you need to correct there? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for letting us come back and present to you. Um, we did have the opportunity to meet with the Block Association and everyone else. Um, 
Tonight we have with us the architect to be able to explain certain things with the backyard of how it's not being completely used. And we have, I know last month it was, you know, a lot of people speaking in opposition, but they have a lot of people speaking in support of their application. They are good operators. Um, and so we just wanna be able to take this time to be able to present and separate ourselves from the sixth ward because they never had anything to do with the sixth ward and how they're operating, you know, a full service restaurant with shareable plates and how it's gonna be beneficial to the community. Okay, thank you. Um, committee, do you have any questions? It's Sorry, I was unable to make last month's meeting, but was there a consensus and we just needed more data points to review this? No, up? we never really got to it because they withdrew before we could do anything. Just like she asked, like, I think basically what happened was uh, uh, they had not had a chance to meet with the block, like the, the local dwellers block association. And so withdrew to have the chance to do that. Basically was my take on how it played out. And they have spoken, and now the dwellers has spoken to the applicant. Cool. So this was, you know, so the reason that we're back is so that we can be able to clarify exactly their method of operation, exactly what they're doing, and what they're planning on bringing to the community. Okay. So do you want to do that? Yeah. So we do want to do that. So we can give um, their project manager and also architect Celeb Jadim, an opportunity to speak. About the backyard? I'm sorry? About the backyard? You want the architect to speak? Yes, because, because it seems to be that everyone thinks that the entire backyard is being utilized. It's not. I don't really, it's not being utilized at all right now. The, 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 <laughs> no one's there. The, you no, know, we- No one's there. So. This is an established, you know, this is a location that's been graffitied up. And so we just want to be able to explain and present of exactly what it is that they're planning and how it is going to be beneficial to the community. Okay, can you do that rather briefly if possible? Salib? Hi, I'm here. Hi, my name is Salib Jairam. I'm the project manager for this project. And I would like to, if possible, share my screen so I can share some stuff with you guys. Is it, that's okay. Uh, hold on. You should be able to know. So what uh, what you guys are looking at here is a rendering of what the uh, establishment 191 would look like. Here you see is the bar, and here in the back is where you're going to see the dining area. Uh, as you can see. This space is going to be a very like luxurious, high end kind of space. Uh, it's not what I'm not even sure what the space was before, but this establishment is going to be really nice. And also, um, we also I know there was a concern regarding the egress. What this area back here that we're discussing, this area right here is going to be completely covered and it's just on the deck area. And as you can see, we're complying in every process for proper egress and making the proper changes with the doors that were here before to make it what in compliance with what needs to be. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show is that also there wasn't an alt for this and we are opening it and refiling it for that purpose. So this is the application here, so you see that. And yeah, and that's really it that I had on my end, if you guys have any questions. Okay, thank you. Rosa, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, um, they have many people in, you know, in support on this meeting, speaking on their behalf, and I would just like to be able to give them an opportunity to be able to speak. Okay, are they residents of the neighborhood? Yes, they are residents of the neighborhood. They are residents of the building itself. They okay. have a lot of signatures in support of their application. So, okay. all right, um, committee, do you have any questions? 
I have a question. I'm confused. Um, Ms. Ruiz, you said that they're not at all associated with the cabin bar. Can you explain? No, it's like not six floor. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm misreading the the application then, or the. Okay. Um... Yeah, so they currently operate the the cabin. Got it. My bad. But obviously, we take into account the prior operator because one of the ways to no, I'm let me finish. One of the reasons, one of the ways that we evaluate an application is how the establishment before it was run, because if there was a problem with it, that's a very um, legitimate reason to deny it, you know, per the SLA, I should say, a very legitimate reason to deny a application or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm personally, in a lot of ways, more concerned about what I've heard about the existing operations at the cabin bar. Um, so I will say that when anyone speaks in support, it would be very helpful to know if you will be directly impacted by this application. If you live in the neighborhood, but you don't live on that block or on the corner, please just, you don't need to tell me exactly where you live, but it would be helpful to know if you're going to be directly impacted by this application. And two, if you're testifying, if you've been directly impacted by the applicant's current operation on East 4th Street. So um, anyone from the committee have any questions before we go to public? No? Okay. So if you're here from the public, um, please put your hand up and I will go in order. Okay, this is, again, this is number 9191 Orchard Street. I'll speak. I'm sorry, I don't know how to put my my hand up. Is that okay? I'm, I'm okay, a just hold on a second, please. Yeah. Is that... Uh, okay. All right, Sarah Penegar, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sarah. I live in the building that would be affected by their restaurant opening. Um, I would just like to say that I think this would be a really great addition to our street. I think it's a little different than the rest of the bars on the street. Um, it would bring a very good ambiance. Also, the graffiti and the people that walk by and use their doorway as a public restroom and the homeless people that sleep on the stoop there, um, it's very unsightly. And I think having a beautiful restaurant like this would definitely be a good addition to our street and bring in hopefully a new crowd as well. Thank you. Um, okay, the next hand I see is Joseph Ayala. Hi, good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Joseph Ayala. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. Hi. Um, I'm the uh, president for the Hispanic Society of the New York City Police Department, and um, I just want to say that I've been positively impacted by the uh, cabin NYC. Uh, the Aponte brothers, they're a true success story. They're uh, born and raised uh, from the, in the Lower East Side, from immigrant parents, and I, I think they're just uh, the, the stuff that they, they've done to the, with the community, giving back, paying it forward, making a difference. You know, they've really garnered such a tremendous following on the Lower East Side, you know, from, uh, from feeding, from feeding of families on, you know, whether it be, whether it be uh, uh, turkey giveaways, toy, toy, toy drives, you know, autism, cancer awareness events, they've done so much for this community. And it's, um, you know, for them to really give back as a business owner, two brothers who made it out from the hood, you know, and making a difference and who own such a, a luxurious and elegant uh, space. I think, uh, you know, I'm all for it. I, I really believe on, in them, especially a Hispanic owned business. Okay, thank you. Um, the next hand I see is DM Boyd. DM, go ahead. DM, you're muted if you're talking. All right, we'll come back to DM. Eliza Jordan. Hi. Um, I just wanted to jump on because I live in the building connected to where the restaurant's going to be. Um, I've been to the cabin before. It's one of my favorite places to go. Um, so I think it would be a great addition to our block. 
also just from a safety perspective, um, there's been homeless people who sleep on the back patio, which our fire escapes go straight down. Um, there was an incident of a homeless man trying to break into the building through the back patio. So I think having a nice restaurant in this location would just up the safety in the area. All right, thank you. Um, David, go ahead. David Troutman. Yeah, David Troutman, go ahead. Um, I live down at the end of the block and I'll be brief because I know there's, there's a couple other neighbors on the north end of the block who are more impacted by uh, this location. We all know it was an incredibly bad establishment before. I am very, very concerned about the things I hear about the, the, the cabin. And I, I would feel sad for anybody who would live in this building and want to live above uh, something like that. Thank you. Thanks, David. Um, um, I don't know how to uh, put my hand up either. Okay, I'll put you in the list. Um, DM, are you there? Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, something's been going on with my phone. Sorry. Good. Go ahead. Um, so a um, couple of things, if I may. Um, uh, I'll let the residents that actually speak in the building speak to this. And, and while we appreciate that they went around knocking on doors and got some of the new tenants to support this, I don't think the new tenants they're aware of how bad this situation is in this area. So I will, you know, let the residents that live in the building speak to that and about the homeless situation, which we are we're disputing. We've sent many emails about that. I really find it unfortunate that this is becoming an issue of community versus community. We all live in the same community and many of us are very diverse. Um, we have diverse backgrounds. We have diverse economic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds. We have lived in this community and anyone that knows anything about Health Square, this area is unlivable. And for all the new transplants that believe this is about the homelessness and all, this is a cumulative effect of what's happened to this neighborhood. Another liquor license is not going to help this situation here. It will actually add more problems. And the fact that the cabin is already breaking its stipulations is a fundamental problem. Um, and the, also I find it odd that we've been asking for their paperwork from DOB because I cannot determine, he did it very quickly and he said he's a project manager, so I don't know if he's an architect, was that an Alt-1 filing? And Alt-1 is required because of that egress in the back because that will change the building so they don't have an egress. So I don't know if that's been clarified. So I really don't want us to have this red herring argument that this is about race and that we're not, you know, that we're not all part of the same community. We're fighting for our lives here. Like literally we cannot sleep. We cannot get outside of our door without people puking and screaming or fighting. Um, and that is the cumulative effects of too much saturation in this area. So I really hope the committee will look at this at, from the prism of the fighting for foot law. And as we said, and we talked very long with Rosa and, and, and um, Mr. Aponte, and I find it odd that Mr. Dresden is not speaking at all anymore. Mr. Aponte now is the, the point person. I didn't know his brother was involved, so I'm super confused about that, is that we explained very clearly that this is not personal. This is about the location. This is about the neighborhood and what we're under. So I hope the community will you know, look at that and, and consider, as we told Rosa over and over, we're not saying you're the sixth ward. We're saying the law requires that we look at the previous applicant, which Michelle has repeatedly tried to explain as well. So I thank you for your time. I hope you'll look at how bad Health Square is. We have the highest rate of crime um, and our particular area does it, uh, directly um, in the seventh precinct. So thank you. Thanks. Okay, okay the next hand I see is Dana, Dana Valka. Can you address that? Oh, okay, quickly, please. Thank you. No, it's just, um, you know, everyone keeps bringing up the previous operator. This has nothing to do with the previous operator. Rose, I'm going to cut you off because as I've explained several times is that it does actually have to do with the previous operator because we're evaluating not just your applicant, but also the space where this is happening. And legally, the SLA does take that into account. So that's, I'm just, that I, I don't think I want to have to say it again, but that is part of the thing that we evaluate every time there's a location that has a problem. And this was one of the worst locations on Lori's side. So, And what I'm trying to explain and what everybody keeps bringing up is the previous operator, but at the same time, this has nothing to do with the previous operator. They're not operating anywhere near the method of operation to what the previous operator was doing. And I'm asking to just please look at the menu and what they're bringing to the neighborhood. And people are, in fact, really happy that they are coming to the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. 
I'm sorry. Can I just she mentioned something? I'm sorry. That doesn't make sense. Then we, if she doesn't want us to look at the past, can we look at the cabin breaking their stipulations? Isn't that important too? Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, the next hand I see is Dana Valka. Hey there. Uh, it's actually my name is Angel. I own a business next near the cabin. I'm actually uh, right around the corner. Um, I'm, I'm under my wife's Zoom. That's why Dana's name pops up. But I just Thanks. wanted to kind of just chime in. And I mean, I've known these guys for the past two and a half years. I don't, I don't know exactly. You know, I'm not really hip on what the complaints are at the cabin, um, but I think they do get a lot of flack for. I mean, I live on Avenue A, so I hear tons of there's a, a frat party, a frat house actually there. Like it's noisy all day long till seven in the morning. And I, you know, I'm not sure if that's what they get flack for, but what I can say, you know, I can attest to these guys being solid, uh, you know, owners. Um, I've, I've never, I mean, I've, I've frequent the place. I've never seen massive crowds outside. Um, and it's, it's always a tame environment. It's never, you know, most people are just sitting down or having a drink at the bar. So if this new place is going to be anything like that, I think it'll be, you know, a wonderful addition. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, the next hand I see is Eric Gumpert. Eric, go ahead. Uh, hi, yeah, I, I just want to say this, this is a really horrible idea to open up this place and, and it, it doesn't have as to do with previous uh, owners, but it has to do with, it, with a, there's nothing realized since it's a tiny street there and, and the people pouring out at 4 a.m. There's, there's no place for them to go and when, and, you, and I assume they'll be checking IDs on the street and, and there's security and fighting this happen. And I, I mean, it's just what, what we went through for years was so horrible with any establishment of this size and with other establishments. So these people that, uh, I mean, that were saying that it's a good, uh, a new addition, but, but with the, the just the numbers of existing places, you can't walk down Orchard Street as it is, and uh, you know, and every and I've you know the questions one could ask: Will will they be checking ID? Is there any way they can do that? You know, indoors or doing it on the street, uh, and, and with subwoofers, and, and it's such. But the main problem is just a very narrow street, and it not only affects that. I feel sorry for the tenants in that uh, uh, building, but every building and next door and across. I live right across the street. And it just becomes a dreadful environment with anything open to 4 a.m. Uh, playing playing music as, as a club, nightclub. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Okay, the next hand I see is Debbie Cox. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Debbie Cox. I am a longtime resident of the Lower East Side. Um, I resigned at CB3. Um, I know the Aponte brothers since they attended programs at Hemingway Street Settlement. They are Lower East Side. Um, their mother worked at Gouverneur Hospital for 32 years. You know, this is when I heard about them opening up a business in, our, in the neighborhood that they reside in. Um, I think it's just an opportunity for anybody and all our young people who wants to come back and open up something in their own community. So I do hope that you approve their license and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, the next hand I see is Daisy Paez. Daisy, go ahead. Okay, well, all, go ahead. Um, yeah, so first of all, I just want to say that I'm really surprised at the fact that um, you, Michelle, never mentioned to anyone that has been applying for something previously, um, said that the only people that can talk with people who will become immediately impacted in the community. Um, well, I'll just clarify that. Wait, I wait, wait, excuse me. I live on Grand Street. I live on Grand Street. It's not too far from Orchard Street, and I know them personally. So we're not able to speak on how we feel about them. These guys give back to our community. These guys participate in everything. I, I, I represent low income, and these guys, whatever they, they, whatever success they've gathered from opening up their business, they have poured it into our community. So all I'm asking for the same consideration and the same way you found a compromisable way for everybody else, because I've been sitting here for two hours, to try to give them a compromisable way. Give them an opportunity because they deserve it. They're from our community and they've been here. I've been here 65 years. I have 65 years invested in here. So does that young man's mother. Just give them an opportunity. Thank you. 
Thanks. I'll just clarify that what I was trying to say is, and I apologize if this did not come across, across clearly, but it's helpful for us as a committee to evaluate the application if we hear from folks who are going to be physically directly impacted by um, an application. I've said that before and I'll, I'll say it again and I, and I stand by mm -hmm. it. So that's just what mm -hmm. I meant. Um, okay, the next hand I see is Patricia Ivers. Yes, hi, do you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I live in the building. I live at 191 Orchard Street and I've lived in the community for 50 years. That's how long I've lived in the building. Um, I love uh, small business and if this business was going to be an elegant restaurant that closed at 11 o'clock, I, I told them I'd be in there three days a week eating dinner, but it's not. It's going to be, as soon as I hear the term shareable plates, to me, that's like a code for a cocktail bar. Uh, you know, I don't want another bar. When we had the sixth uh, ward, the sound vibrated the plates in my kitchen. And I, I have no uh, feeling that that's going to change. Having the backyard, the backyard is completely a fire trap. There is no egress. That is on the record. And, um, you know, I, please open a restaurant that closes at 11 o'clock and we will give you our full support. Another bar we do not need in this neighborhood. I've been assaulted myself on my front steps. So, you know, please, you know, and, and, and don't tell me there's homeless people in the backyard, that's fiction. So that's, that's uh, my feeling and uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Um, okay, um, Bridget Gannon, go ahead. Thanks, Michelle. Um, I'm also a resident of 181 Orchard Street. I'm also a lifelong member of the community. I was born and raised in the Lower East Side. I'm a product of public schools. I am a registered nurse in New York City. And when Sixth Ward was operating, I was so chronically sleep deprived going to work to see patients. It was awful. Our neighborhood does not need another bar that opens till four o'clock in the morning. It's not safe. Women in the neighborhood get followed by drunk men in the neighborhood. People urinate outside of our building all the time. We do not need another bar. I think for the newer residents in the building that are that came here to support, I think they they it's not coming from a place of knowing. I can tell you that much. And I also want to add that this narrative that is being spun that there are homeless people living in the back, my windows face the back. It's not possible because there's no secondary egress for homeless people to get to the yard. So that is complete fiction. I'm begging you, please do not support this license. The last thing we need is another bar that is open till four o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Bridget. Um, Clint, go ahead. Okay, I just wanna speak quickly. I did speak last month, but I know there's some committee members that were not here last month. So I wanted to just give a quick little refresh. Um, we met with this applicant years, several years ago when they came to the East 4th Street Block Association. They, they promised us they were gonna be a neighborhood place. And I think, I think to a point they are, but they also agreed not to use the backyard. They agreed not to have live music. They agreed to close the doors and windows at 10 p.m. They are, do, they are not doing, I mean, they do some of those things sometimes, but there are definitely times where that's been a problem. I myself have witnessed it. There are pictures of it. And when I've stopped different times, I've stopped, the bouncer would not let me in when I asked to see a manager. So, you know, I know that he said at one point there was no manager there. And then the other time he said the manager was busy. So I'm not going to get in a confrontation with a bouncer over a doorman, security, whatever you're calling them, over something like that. But I have personally witnessed this. And it's been very frustrating because they gave us their word that they would be good neighbors. And there are people that have had huge problems time and time and time and time again for years. We've spent hours working with the community board office on this. So I just want to make sure that they may be really nice people, but they're not operating a good business. Thanks, Clint. Um, Susan, go ahead. Yeah, there are a couple things I want to mention from the aspect of speaking as district manager. Um, first of all, um, Michelle already said this, but I'm going to repeat it. Technically, the SLA absolutely does look at previous problems in a location um, because the location itself can be part of the problem. Um, two, they have a history. The owners have a history 
in this community and it, their history with their license is extremely negative. I have spent hours um, trying to work with the police, with the Fourth Street Block Association. Um, one of the problems is that they have an in with the police um, at a precinct meeting, the commanding officer even introduced me to the owner to say he's trying to you know, be a good neighbor. And I kept explaining the use of the backyard. One, it's illegal because of zoning. Two, it was against the stipulations. They had parties there where the police had parties there, not this precinct, but they, please don't put your hand up when I'm speaking. Um, the police had parties there. The commanding officers said to me, I will not stop this party because it is a, a police officer's daughter's graduation from college. The police were all, it was like a war zone. Um, we have many photos of cigar parties in the backyard. It is a constant problem. You can't come into the community and act in a certain way and then pretend it didn't happen. I also want to speak to the issue of homeless people. Um, first of all, someone broke in. You don't know if that person was homeless unless there's a police report on it. If you see, we don't open bars or restaurants or any kind of business to take care of homeless people. If you should do two things, call 311, call the community board office. We will try and get social services out there so that maybe they can get a help. But this, you, you don't use homeless people for bars, please. Thanks. Um, okay, Ivy Aponte, are you putting your hand up to speak? Okay, can you unmute, please? Hi, I have Rosa Aponte here, um, and I'm gonna be translating what she needs to say. Hi, uh, Rosa Aponte. I live it too many years in the lo Lower East Side. She lived in the Lower East Side for many years. I'm working in Gouverneur Hospital for housekeeping for 32 years. She worked in the Gouverneur Hospital for 32 years. I'm working hard the housekeeping for my for my son for opportunity. She worked hard to give her sons an opportunity. I'm a mother. Yo soy una madre sola. She's a single mother. Jose Luis, eh, Jose Joey Aponte. He is my son. He is working hard. El work, el trabaja duro para la familia, para él y para ayudar a Lover, a Lover East Side, la comunidad de Lover East Side. Joey Jose Aponte works very hard for his family and for the community of the Lower East Side. Um, es mi sueño americano. We are the American dream. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, anyone else from the community here? I don't see any other hands, but if you are here to speak, just put up your Zoom hand now, or I'm just gonna turn it over to the committee because it's getting really late. Yes, Frank Gonzalez here. Um, okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Just multitasking here. Uh, Frank Gonzalez, I represent uh, the Low East Side Small Business Alliance, which was established two years ago during uh, the beginning of pandemic. Uh, one of our founding members is new council member, Christopher Marte. And uh, we formed this alliance, but kind of sort of something in these type of situations where we specifically, uh, our members are, and, and our main objectives is to support minority owned people of color, native uh, Low East Siders, East Village, Low East Sider, Alphabet City, whatever you guys decide to call it nowadays. I call it all just Low East Side. Oh yeah, I'm born and raised uh, in the East Village. Now that they call it the East Village on 12 and C, I'm product of NYCHA. Uh, I, uh, I do real estate by uh, day trade. And I can tell you that that orchard, that 191 was a nightmare. And uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a nightmare right now being at the and a couple of other lots on that same street that it's just graffitied out and empty. And, um, you know, 
what these guys are trying to bring to the table. And I keep, you know, this is what bothers me. I keep hearing transplants. I keep hearing bar. I keep hearing these people. Please don't say it. I, I heard it. And, 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 and you know what? It would be great if, 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 look how many people we have in this meeting. Imagine if we could all really come together, unite, and, and give these guys a shot. Because I'm definitely vouching for this. I, I wear too many hats in this community. The only thing I'd like to say is this. It's been hard being a Latino growing up in this gentrified neighborhood. You know, you guys are thinking you get, oh, gosh, here we go. That is correct. I heard times have changed. I heard that we could speak up now. I heard that you guys are supposed to listen. So I want to say is this. I'm vouching for this. And I know I have a few other people that couldn't even make it to this meeting that are really prominent people in the community. We're vouching. We're vouching for the, the owner. We're vouching for, for the Latino business. We're vouching for this nightmare place. This is why it's a perfect place uh, for a beautiful establishment because it's been a nightmare, right? I heard, I understand that I'm from the neighborhood. How would I be affected by this business? It'll be affected by this business if this business can't operate in its own backyard because it's gonna provide jobs for our people first, all right, it's gonna change the area. And, and the only thing I'm saying is give us give us a shot. The point of the Small Business Alliance is to preserve the little minority owned businesses from the neighborhood, really from the neighborhood, because we don't have too many. So once again, I'm Frank Gonzalez. I'm Olivia's chaplain and many, many, many churches of this area. I'm asking you, give them a shot. Thank you. Thank you. Is it just me or is it, I can't hear Michelle? I'm done, thank you. Oh, sorry, okay, I was muted. Um, Kenya, I see your hand up. Hi, thanks. Um, I just wanted you to chime in real quick. With everything being said on both parties in consideration to everybody, is there a compromise to, to, to everything that's in the, you know, on the table right now that could possibly see this through in a more positive light as like starting new, giving a new chance, maybe adjusting the hours, you know, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Kenyon. Um, okay, I'm gonna bring it back to the committee now. It's getting very late for us. Um, uh, Jeanette, go ahead. I. I'm with Kenny L. I, I really do want to see some kind of compromise. It does seem that nope. there's like a legitimate desire to run like a restaurant. And I, I do want to support small business owners. I I wouldn't want to deny it outright, but I, I, I would be fine with a huge compromise on the hours. Um, it just doesn't, yeah. They're new operators. They seem to be members of the community that are very valued. They've spoken to people in the building. Um, I understand that the cabin is a different experience. I do wish that other applicant were here to speak on his behalf, his or her or their behalf. Um, but yeah, I'd like I'd like to see this application go through as well. Okay, I'm just gonna. Say, they're not new operators. Um, I mean, I, we've heard like pretty extensively about the problems at the cabin, which which that's what I guess I just don't understand the perspective of giving them a chance because it seems like they've been given a chance already. Uh, extensively and um, are con are consistently breaking their stipulations. So even if we ask them for certain hours or certain things like don't use the backyard, how can we how can we trust um, that they'll that they'll abide by those stipulations, especially if we're being told that PD won't enforce stipulations? Um, I don't know, it kind of leaves us like in a kind of leaves us in a bad spot. I mean, David, go ahead. Right. Um, we, we should make the case that both this operator is, is not going to be a good operator as evidenced by ignoring stipulations at cabin and causing trouble there and the previous location. I mean, it's, it's a very strong case with the SLA and I think we need to do that. Okay, so David, are you advocating for a outright denial? Yes. Okay. 
Herman, what are you thinking? I haven't been thinking this, uh, anything at this point, uh, except the fact that, um, you know, I could take all the, um, the pleadings in terms of um, what the supporters are saying. However, based on what I'm hearing from Susan and, and, and other people is that there was a chance given for them to make things right in, in the place that they are working right now. And I feel, you know, that people, when you get a chance like that, it's, and you mess it up, it's gonna follow you forever. It doesn't matter. And expecting that, okay, the experience in this neighborhood of being born here, raised here, lived here, and not respecting the neighborhood in such a way as to make the existing place palatable so that, um, you know, people like me could support the fact that the number of places I've supported, frankly, doesn't mean the fact that I know that the majority of the people who open businesses at this neighborhood are, are not, are mostly not people who lived and um, the parents have invested a lot of things to maintain this neighborhood so that these other people could come in the neighborhood and be successful. Uh, I think what happened is these uh, young people should go back and look at their performance in the neighborhood and see what they, See, see how they could atone for the fact that having lived in this neighborhood and not respecting the neighborhood in the business that they are running and then trying to convince people in the neighborhood that it's appropriate to start another business in the neighborhood. You know, as a business person myself doesn't, doesn't sit too well. It doesn't seem too well, because if people are telling me that they lived and respect the neighborhood um, and the history of this neighborhood, then you have to do something different. You can't disrespect the neighborhood. And one of the thing is based on what, and I'm going on and on, but one of the things is establishing a business. And if we're talking about minority business and whatever, uh, we can't talk about upscale because when you talk about ups upscale, uh, minority people talking about upscale, it only means that you are sort of pushing aside the pe some of the people you would like to have support you and to participate or support the business. Um, I'm not sure what I wanna say about this, but it, it doesn't, you know, and I, I heard the mother and the cousins and I, my good friend, um, Frank, <laughs> you know, Love you, uh, talk, talk about this. But if we are not behaving ourselves, we can't expect to judge other people that comes into the neighborhood. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't think I could support on the circumstances, uh, the behavior at the other place, not thinking it might not happen at this new place. Okay, thanks Herman. I'm just um, going to say, it sounds like I'm well outnumbered. I don't really, like, could we just move this to, it just sounds like we're already in decision or. Okay. 
Um, I was just going to quickly pull everyone. Jesse. Can I just get one one minute? Sorry. Uh, who are you? Are I'm you I'm, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I never attended me, but I, I live in the neighborhood. I just want to just give me give me one minute before you guys vote sure. just to give me my two cents there. Go Thank ahead. you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, um, cabin, very successful story. They got moved in and in that block and definitely turned the block around. Very impressed. But Joe Ponte has definitely been a pillar of the community over the past, you know, year or so. He was one of the first to open up and recover for the pandemic. And he has been awarded through community functions, actions, been commended on um, on his on his community interaction and through different uh, community organizations civically. Um, on the 27th of this month, actually, he's being honored by the uh, the Holy the NYP Holy Name Society for his appreciation award um, over at the Hilton Hotel uh, in Midtown. So he's being uh, citywide. He's being recognized as a trailblazer and someone who's up and coming for this community. So, you know, that's. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, uh, Jesse, what are you thinking? Um, I, you know, it's hard because I, I always appreciate when there's the support that comes out, I feel like so that is a, definitely something that I, I would take into consideration. But like you said, it not them not being a new um, that they were given this chance before and there's this outpouring, um, it makes me hesitant to say yes. That's where I'm leaning. Okay, and Paul? All right, Paul. All right, I think we lost Paul for the moment. Um, okay, I mean, I think I've already basically said how I'm feeling that this is not a first chance, they got a chance. And it, it's, I mean, I'll just say, Susan is extremely, you know, measured when it comes to this kind of stuff. And truly, I'm sure is speaking from an actual, you know, I, I have not been involved in this, but speaking from really just a negative experience with trying to mitigate these problems. So I, you know, I just want to say that again. Um, so, um, okay, Paul, did I lose you? Yes, he's gone. Um, okay. Um, all right, committee, we're good. If not, I'm gonna call the question and move us. Um, Are you, can you please give me an opportunity to speak? Sure, but really we've heard a lot. So please be, be quick. Yeah, I'm gonna be really quick. I know that everyone, keep, you know, quite a few people are referencing this place as a bar. This is not a bar. This is going to be a very elegant place where people are no longer gonna, going to be, you know, peeing in the street. The graffiti is going to be taken away. It's an extremely beautiful, elegant place that they're promoting to the neighborhood. They give back to the community, you know, nonstop. They have multiple people in support of their application. Um, we tried to have the architect explain to you how, you know, what it is that they're doing, you know, with the backyard, how they're not utilizing the entire backyard, how they're not, there's not going to be any noise emanating to disturb anyone because it's going to be only an enclosed structure on the cement, on the cement only. And I feel that none of that is being heard. Okay. This is not Thank a bar. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay, committee. Any other questions? Oh, Paul, are you back? Paul Ceros. No, internet problems. Um, okay. Um, any other questions, committee, before we move this to a vote? Okay, and I think we've all agreed, I'm making a motion to deny this application outright. 
Um, sounds like that's where the committee was going. Is there a second for that? Can I ask okay. one last question before we go to a vote? Sure. Because it seems, you know, because I keep being muted, even though I'm not muting myself. Um, can we discuss like reducing, reducing the hours, taking away the DJ? I am not open to that. I don't know if there's any other committee members that are open to that. I think all of the problems that we described don't really have anything to do with the operation, the method of operation. It's just we've what we're hearing is that the proposed the agreed legally agreed upon method of operation at the cabin is not abided by. So as I said, it doesn't matter what we say because we have no faith that the applicant will actually abide by whatever stipulations we put forth. We have not been able to then subsequently remedy that lack of following the stipulations. So we we so from my perspective at least I would not be supportive of changing the method of operation because it doesn't seem to matter and is what have, I'm trying to say. And you have multiple people on this call saying how they love the cabin and that how they give back to the community and how they they run you know a good restaurant. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to move it to the committee now. Um, okay. Does anyone want to, I'm not supportive of, change, of negotiating the method of operation. It didn't seem like anyone else was David, Herman, Jesse. Okay. Okay. So somebody seconding, seconding, seconding the uh, motion to deny. Okay. Thanks. All right. So I, I read the resolution out loud at the beginning um, committee. You have it. Um, and I'll add, and I just took notes about the, the input, which I'll add to the resolution. Um, but just to reiterate, we're going to, uh, vote on a resolution to deny this outright. Um, so hearing no further questions or concerns, moving this to a vote for the committee, Michelle, yes. Jeanette. No. Jesse. Yes. David. Yes. Herman. Herman. Yes. Okay, and I think we lost Paul. Um, okay, so this motion carries um, for the denial. Thank you for everyone who came out tonight um, and spent this time with us. Um, we appreciate your time as always. Um, thank you as well. Thank you, Rosa. Have a good night. I just had to unmute myself again because you muted me. As I said, if you're talking out of turn, we will mute you. It's, I apologize. It's just, we have to move on with the meeting. We are all volunteers. So, okay. I, I, I let everyone speak and I, you know, and I, Man, it's I'm not, gonna mute you. it's Thank not you. okay. Can I say something? Uh, no, sorry. We've moved on from oh, this. We're moving on. We already did the vote. Let's go to the next one. The next application is number eight, El Pasto Acanto, 190 East 2nd Street. Are the applicants for that here? Yes, I'm the rep, Teddy Gonzalez. I'm here. My Hi, client Teddy. should be on there. I don't think it's fair that you didn't give anybody the chance. Okay, actually, we gave a lot of people the chance. We're moving on to the next application, which is number eight, El Pasto Acanto, 190 East 2nd Street. Uh, Teddy, is your client here? Yes, I am. Okay. There he goes. To speak, Dresden did not get to speak. I'm, so, sir. Please. I apologize. I. Um. Okay. I'm gonna hit the highlights for this, and uh, I'll ask you guys if you have anything to correct. I will just say that if there are folks here to speak on behalf, or if there if there are supporters here to speak on behalf of this. It's really late. Um, if you could like choose one or two people to speak, I don't know if that's the case, but if there is, just in case, I'm just putting putting that out there. It'd be very helpful to us if you would do that, and then just tell us how many people are supporting. Um, okay, so this is an application for an upgrade to a full on-premises liquor license, and the premise is located at 190 East 2nd Street between Avenues A and B. Um, this is a CFO of 40 people, six tables with 16 seats and one 16 foot bar with a full kitchen serving Italian food during all hours of operation and ambient recorded background music only. 
There are 17 full on-premises um, uh, liquor licenses within 500 feet. Uh, this location has been licensed to the Saint, the, the operators who are applying tonight to serve beer and wine um, uh, for 20 years. And there was no adverse history except for one COVID related um, uh, executive order violation for not for serving alcohol without food. Um, there are four commercial 301 complaints at this location with NYPD action necessary since 2018. Four residents um, emailed the committee to support the application and 91 residents who live within two blocks signed a petition in favor. Uh, the hours are closing 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 2 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Uh, if they use outdoor dining, they'll close it by 10, which um, we had an understanding that there might've been an issue with the owner using um, the parking space out front um, for personal use before we had uh, the open restaurants program. So we were asking as part of your stipulation that you will uh, not do anything like that outside of your stipulations or the ability to do that with open restaurants. Um, anyone from the committee have any, or sorry, I should say um, applicants, do you have anything to add or correct? Well, you basically covered everything. The fact that he's, um, that he's been there over like uh, since February, 1999. Um, uh, he has a good uh, support from the community. A lot of people in the area. There's probably a lot of people on here that want to speak, so I'm, I'll be real quick. Um, he's a very good operator. Basically his uh, forte is an Italian restaurant with uh, a lot of uh, a, big a big menu on the, on the wine choices. I, I, I think I gave that to the community board, uh, very expensive bottles of wine. And basically that's about it. I mean, and by the way, he, the owner is listed on the Beatrice Tosti on the, on the meeting because it's a computer froze. Sure. Um, okay, any questions from the Pedro? committee? Oh, sorry, what was that? Pedro, do you want to say anything? Sorry? No. Uh, no, I mean, uh, we're mom and pop business. Uh, Second Street is our home. We, we live further downtown. We just, be, we just tell people we, uh, we sleep downtown because our home has been Second Street. Um, we're, we're honored to be a part of that block in the community, uh, watching so many children grow up and now them having children. And uh, the community's always supported us since day one. And my wife and I, uh, have done the same thing. Um, she's the Italian one in the family, obviously. And uh, we look forward to uh, continuing. And um, I, I don't know what else to add. If there's any questions, I'll gladly answer them. Great, thank you. Um, anyone from the committee have any questions? You know, I just, sorry, I, the application and I couldn't do more research on it. The history of this restaurant is that it's been licensed since how long? Since 1999. To the same operator and same business? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, any other questions from the committee? Are, are we dealing with an upgrade or was it licensed before? Upgrade, yep. They've been continuously licensed since February 1999 with the restaurant wine license. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and all right, so if you're here from the community to speak on this, please raise your hand. But like I said, <laughs> I'd really like to keep this as short as possible. <laughs> um, okay, if you could just be like super brief, that would be wonderful because I can, I, can, I can sense the way that this is going. I see six hands right now, seven. Can you raise your Zoom hands? <laughs> okay, all right. Teddy, are there people you want to select to speak? I would really appreciate it. Like it's uh, after nine already. I, I, I wish I could. I think uh, Pedro, if you can, you know. We'll um, count how many people came, but if you could just have count, if you could just I, choose one or two folks to speak. I know they waited, it's really but. It's hard for me to figure it out, but I can only hope that if people are speaking for or against that, because it's getting late, that they'll could we, could we time them to two minutes? We always we always do two minutes, Herman, but that's only right, another so like fifteen minutes if we do that, at least twenty minutes. Make it one minute. How about that? All right, one all right, minute. all right, Jeff, go ahead. Be fair to the applicant. 
Okay, uh, my name is Jeff Rose. I've lived, in, uh, born in Queens, lived in the city for 30 years. I know these guys for over 20 years. What's striking is everybody's talking about the things that they're gonna do to remediate this bad thing or to prevent that bad thing. Julio is a positive for the neighborhood. The thing that really strikes me aside from the amazing food and that people go there to drink and it's not a real young, crazy crowd. It's mostly mature folks and professionals. Julio is the neighborhood watch. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen him come to the aid of women who are being uh, just short of molested, uh, how he's helped the firemen in the neighborhood since 9-11 and before that. Julio is not just, we're not gonna do the bad thing. Julio makes the neighborhood better. And it would really be a near crime to not let these guys compete on a level playing field because if, if they lose, one table a night because somebody wants a cocktail. It makes it very difficult for them to compete with the booze slingers. I'm gonna stop now. It would be- Thank a you, appreciate it. He's not granted the upgrade. Okay, the next hand, hand I see is Mark White. Mark, go ahead. Hi, uh, Mark White, thanks so much. Really quick, um, I've lived on this block for 30 years. When they moved in, uh, it, it made such a difference to the neighborhood. They're just so important to the community. And, you know, it's not just a restaurant on the street. They're my neighbors and I consider them like family. It's just, I, I hope that you can see what, just how much the community cares for them and they care for the community. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Leah B, Leah B, sorry if I'm mispronouncing. No problem, Leah Blewett. Thanks so much for your patience, everyone. I'll be very quick. Um, I moved into the neighborhood in 2013 and moved into the building across the street from El Posto and Julio was one of the first people to welcome me. Uh, he and B have always made me feel as though the block and the building were my home. Um, it's heartwarming to hear so many other people sharing the same stories and I know them to be true because I see all of you when I visit El Posto, which I do often. Um, I moved away, met my husband and moved back this year. Uh, and when I needed someone to hold on to the keys to our apartment, as we were preparing to move back into the same building, uh, it was Julio and his staff that did that for us. Um, this was never the place, even in my 20s, that I went out to drink and be rowdy. Uh, it was the place that I took my mom when she came to visit. Um, this is not a place to party and rage, and adding alcohol to this place is not the thing that will do that. Um, it will give them, as Jeff said, a level playing field, an opportunity to serve cocktails that match their food and their amazing wine list. Uh, and I really couldn't be more supportive. Oh, and my neighbor is, my window is across the street. So if there's any noise coming out of your post, I'm the one who hears it. Um, and there's not, it, it is the opposite of a nuisance bar, strong endorse. Thank okay. you. Great, thank you. Um, the next hand I see is Chloe Batista. Hi, I have lived on 190 East 2nd Street for about three years. And I am in full support of this, like everyone else said. Um, Julio and B are incredible neighbors and they honestly became family to me very quickly. And I really think this would be a great addition um, to the neighborhood. And I'll stop there. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you so much. I appreciate your brevity. Uh, Paul O'Dwyer, go ahead. Yeah, hi. I'm not so sure I have so much to add that people haven't said already, but uh, I've been in the neighborhood for 30 years, part of the 30 year crew, it seems like on tonight's meeting. Um, and uh, yeah, so Julio and B and El Posto have made the uh, neighborhood much more of a neighborhood. Um, it's become kind of a vital spot, I think, to people who live here or who have lived here for a while. And um, they give a lot back to the neighborhood. And I also want to echo what the earlier speaker said, which is that adding a a full liquor license is not really going to change the nature of El Posto. They have a well-established clientele. So it's not like people who have never heard of it are suddenly going to start traipsing there because they have uh, a liquor license, And but it can only add to and enhance uh, their establishment. And I think it's what they deserve after these years. Great, thanks. Um, the next hand I see is James Waters. Good evening. I know that's been a uh, very long evening for you. I appreciate uh, having been a New York City police chief for 39 years, retiring two years ago as the chief of counterterrorism. I've known uh, B and Julio now for about 15 years, Il Posto, as we, as we in my family call it, Julio's, as we pa uh, patronize the restaurant quite often. My daughter-in-law had her bridal shower there. It's a well-established business in the neighborhood for many years. And I guess the board considers certain things. 
Are they added value to East Second Street community? I see when I when I patronize the location, East Second Street is an extended family and they are respectful, thoughtful, and they are good neighbors. Does Il Posto enhance the stability of the neighborhood? I think the answer is clearly a resounding yes. And I submitted a letter of support uh, to attest to that. So I respectfully request that the board support the application. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next hand I see is Jean-Paul Valencia. Hi there. <clears throat> uh, Julio and B, when they came to the community, uh, Avenue B over there was was uh, not the same as it is today, let's put it that way. And they, they're, they're an anchor uh, restaurant and proprietor in the community. And, and aside from them being wonderful people, they're, they're good business owners. And, you know, after 20 years, they haven't had any issues with, with the business, which, which tells you something, uh, you know, I think they should have the opportunity to go forward and and add to this list, it's a very small place. It's not as if they're going to change the uh, the proprietors uh, coming in overnight. It's really just to enhance their existing menu in, in uh, challenging times, if you will. Great, thank you. Um, the next hand I see is Margie Siegel. Yes, um, I also live in the neighborhood and I can speak very highly for them. Their food is exceptional. They are exceptional. Their employees are exceptional by allowing them to enhance their license and their opportunity to operate as such will only enhance the neighborhood greatly. Fabulous, thank you. Oop, sorry. The next hand I see is Mark uh, Max Tucci. Yes, hello, good evening. My name is Max Tucci. My grandfather was the owner of Oscar's Delmonico, Delmonico's restaurant downtown on Wall Street. And I bring that up because I see the beauty that B and Julio bring to the neighborhood. They are a dynamic couple. They bring glamour and sophistication to the neighborhood. And again, as the echoing of everyone here tonight, we applaud them. We look forward to seeing how they can expand their business. COVID was a horrible time for them. And by enhancing and upgrading their license, I hope and pray that they will continue to be successful. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, okay, Lee Quinones. Hello, everyone. This is my first community board meeting, believe it or not. Welcome. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, in brief, I grew up in the neighborhood almost all my life. And like a gentleman had mentioned before, Second Street was a whole different world uh, uh, not so long ago. And Beatrice and Julio bring an exceptional business. I call it my own personal culinary sanctuary. Um, it's a very sophisticated place. They run a tight ship. Their, their, their staff is, they run even a tighter ship and they're very respectful. And um, I have uh, nothing but gratitude for them for bringing uh, a neighborhood prescription to a neighborhood that had struggled for so long and I saw it in my very eyes. So I approve of them 110%. Thank you for hearing my words. Thank you. Okay, Anthony Marshall. Um, I just want to assure the committee that um, Julio and Beatrice do not have a party bus or, um, or boozy brunches. Um, and that's all I can add. Great, thank you. Um, okay, those were all the hands I saw. Um, okay, committee, do you have any questions, comments, concerns? Okay. All right, I'm gonna share the stipulations for... Okay, my computer is sleepy. It's late for it too. Okay, um, oh. Sorry about that, obviously 196. Okay, so this is for uh, upgrade to a liquor, wine, beer, cider license for El Posto Aconto Inc. at 190 East 2nd Street. They'll operate a full service Italian restaurant, kitchen open, serving food during all hours of operation, uh, opening all days by noon, closing by 12 a.m. Sunday to Wednesday and 2 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. Uh, any outdoor space they use for open restaurants will be closed by 10 p.m. all days. They'll close any front or rear facade doors at 10 p.m. 
you know, DJs, live music, promote events, event with a cover for your scheduled performances. They'll only play ambient recorded background music. No alterations about coming back here. They'll not participate in pub crawls or have party buses. No unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches with food. No happy hour uh, specials. Um, no wait lines. Staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering. Uh, you will close all outdoor dining under the temporary open restaurants program and any other subsequent uses by 10 and not have any speakers or TV monitors. Does that all sound right, Teddy? Um, I, I, it's fine. Um, you don't have any TVs, right, uh, Julio? Outside. Oh, only This is only about outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. No, that's we only fine. Have TV inside and that's only on during the daytime if there's a special event or something or... Yeah, no, we, that's, that's, that's fine. Okay. It's, only, it's only an outdoor thing that we have the problem. Yeah, that's fine, Michelle. Okay, great. Okay, committee, any objections to moving into a vote? No, but let me just say, <clears throat> I supported this completely going into it on its face and that very long show support was unnecessary, but I still support it. So just for future applicants on the agenda, please keep it tight. I was trying to say, I could see where this was going um, and we're, we're, we're all tired. So, but thank you. I, I appreciate that people come out for places that they support as much as they come out for places that they don't support. So can't be a hypocrite there. Um, thank you okay. very much. Moving this um, to a vote and David, can I count this as our final vote? Oh, I didn't realize we were at the end. Um, sure, absolutely. Okay, great. All right, Michelle, present and yes. Jeanette. Yes. Jesse. Yes. David. Yes. Uh, Jamie is absent. Ellen is absent. Herman. Yes. Paul Ceros. We might have lost Paul. All right, we lost Paul. Okay, thank you everyone for coming out. This motion carries. Um, we will send you the stipulations um, tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, thanks for having too. us. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks see, you at, see you at the board. Folks, thank you, all very, thank, thank you all very much. Um, and thank you for allowing my wife and I and our staff to be a part of the community. It, you know, it's been a crazy year, but we could not have done it without the people on Second Street and the people in the community. So I'll thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Love the place and wish you many more good years of success. <laughs> okay. Good night, everyone.